Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Press Box at Holman Stadium in Nashua, New Hampshire. It is playoff time, and the Nashua Silver Knights have earned a playoff berth against the Bristol Blues tonight. I'm John Collins, Jason Roby, Tom King. Tom, you, you must have been at that game. Very exciting. Uh, there, there is no place like home. <laughs> in Pittsfield I've spent, last I spent night. a doubleheader at Seacoast at, at a Bambox Field in, in Portsmouth, Leary Field. And then a night at Wakona Park, about two and two hours and forty-five minutes away. It's nice to be home. Believe me. <laughs> you know they yeah. they qualified for the playoffs. They clinched the playoff spot on Sunday, and then went to Pittsfield on Tuesday after Monday. The league washed it out because of the bad forecast. Yeah. So in Pittsfield on last night, two-two game going into the seventh. Tom Blandini, you know. Nicks the foul, foul pole. pole. He went Nicks pesky it. pole. Yeah. He did. How, how far is the right field pole? <laughs> 305. Nice. That's all right because it was the winning that's run. That's all right because it was like 280 at Leary Field yeah. all, all Sunday, so that was yeah. fine. But uh, it was the winning run. They tacked on two more runs, which I thought was key. But get this. They left the bases loaded twice, mm -hmm. all right? And it hit into three double plays. Pittsfield left 12 men on base. Or, no, 11 men on base. Runners in scoring position in six of the nine innings. Wow. Let so them hang that was too a, long. it was both teams were walking that tightrope. Yeah. But once Nashville got that three run lead, they never it, it, they never gave it up. And uh, I mean tie run came to the plate in the ninth inning. Yeah. You know, but nope, didn't well, happen. Four pitchers combined five shutout innings to finish the game. Yes. They get a lot of credit. Only only runs were a two run homer, but this is gonna be a tough one. This is gonna be tougher. Pittsfield's problem was they were hitting two fifty nine as a team. Bristol's a much better hitting team. I think they're a much better team. They've proven it. They're here. They had the home field advantage. You look at this. One. You look at this Bristol team coming into tonight. The Silver Knights and Bristol played seven times. It's 4-3 Bristol. Yeah. So, obviously, it's a tight series. Looking for Nashville to try and win the series would put them into four, the finals three. again. I accept it's not a seven-game that, series. That's four, correct. 4-3 at seven games. They opened the season at Bristol and with Mike Curtis on the mound. And he pitched shutout ball. And that was probably the best game he pitched until the Brockton game last, uh, late last week. So I guess that's a hit that Mike Curtis is He's on the bump tonight. tonight, yeah. He's on the hill. Yeah. Beautiful night for baseball. Perfect night for baseball. Let's see how many fans show up, you know. They, they didn't have much time to get the word out, so we'll see. We're on live streaming on National ETV. The National Anthem is about to come up, and we'll uh, use that as our cue to shut up. But do we know anything about the Bristol pitcher tonight, Tom? Well, I mean, they, their whole team. They got their ace going, I yeah, imagine, right? They, they, they were, they were off had, yesterday, right? They've had, yeah, they had two seed. They've had basically four days to get their pitching in order. Wow. So they're going to go with number one. And then number two probably goes on, on Tuesday, on, on, uh, on Thursday. You know, in a possible clincher if Nashville can't win here tonight. Yeah, Austin Pope out of Babson will be taking the hill tonight. A left-hander with a uh, 3.5 ERA, 2-0 and in nine appearances. So That's pretty he's, good. He's a pretty good pitcher. He's a lefty. We'll have to wait and see. Talking to B.J. Neverett earlier, he indicated that we got to score first and we got to get a solid start from our pitcher, Mr. Curtis. That's so tough with all the lefties that Nashville usually has yeah. in the lineup. So, uh, interesting tonight. Cam Cook back at third base. He sat it out last night because of a, of a bad uh, groin. He was DHing though, and he got he was and he was a key in the game. Austin Young will catch Dylan Mary gets the night off. Thomas Joyce at first. Commissioner's Award winner Ryan Sullivan will be the DH. The Silver Knights were last year's winners, Tom. Uh, it was kind of a surprising run. Can they do it again? It's going to be tough, John. They're going to have to beat a good Bristol team in three, you know, in, you know, in a three-game series. And then, don't overlook this: the Worcester Bravehearts suddenly have gotten a brave heart because they were swept on Saturday night. After we left here Saturday, they were swept. Looked like they were done. And they managed to beat Pittsfield on, on Sunday night. Gives them the playoff berth, okay? And I remember a couple of years ago. <laughs> Playing with house money. Worcester went in as the fifth seed or fourth seed, you know, a very low seed. Right. And won the, their second straight title. Don't count out the Bravehearts. 
I'm, I'm just listening to that obnoxious voice on the scoreboard right now. It happens to be me calling last They're year's piping your voice over there. Right? About that. <laughs> that was last year's playoff. That was. That last year's uh, game one of the finals, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> right. Yep, where, where Cam D. Sarcina beat out a double play ball barely. Barely yeah. to allow the winning run to score after Sullivan had tied it with a two-run homer in the ninth Let's inning. That was a spectacular way to finish, and I wouldn't put it past them to come up with another great game here this, this evening. See how much they got left in the tank. They yep. were facing elimination Sunday, and they, you know, you know, basically took a two seacoast in the second game of that doubleheader, and then last night played a very efficient road game that, you know, they had some national fans there. It was right. it was pretty interesting. You have a Nashua team also that's batting 290 as a team, which is outstanding. But yeah. they've got to score first, Correct, as Jason sir. said, yep. because they don't come back very well in games. Right. Can I tell you, as a guy that has let off a lot of games as a player, there's never been a game where the coach didn't get in the huddle and say, we need to jump on them early. <laughs> Let's jump on them early. Let's score yeah. some runs. Don't you let them score. Let them do that first. But then when, when uh, you know, Madison Bumgarner's on the mound, <laughs> spinning a lefty, or Chris Sales out there. It's over. It's not always easy yeah, to yeah. jump on them early. The problem is, is this team is not very good at coming from behind. They're right. not. You know, you, know, last, you know, last night they took a 2 nothing lead. Now, Pittsfield got a two-run homer, tied it up. But in Nashville, bounce back. And, not the next inning, the beginning after. So, you know, in my mind, BJ is right. They've got to put up some runs, and they've got to do it, you know, fairly early in the game. Certainly a different squad, not entirely, but these guys have been here before. Yep. Jason right, Roby, Tom time. King, John Collins with the National Anthem, Al St. Louis. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave or the land of the free and the home of the brave Al St. Louis one of the most prolific singers of the national anthem in the United States of America. It is 7.03 on a beautiful Wednesday, August 9 of 2017. John Collins with Tom King and Jason Roby, the veteran football coach and youth coach. You know, it's uh, football season is just about here, Jason, but we're going to squeeze a little more excitement out of the baseball season yet well, I think, here at home and tonight. I think the folks here in Nashville don't know how good they have it. We're talking about a uh, an FCBL team that has won this thing three times in 2011, 2012, and 2016. How about they, that? I'd like the Red Sox. They've been they're pro very, producing lately. Very, very similar. Yeah. Uh, seven playoff appearances, 13 players signed to Major League Baseball contracts. That's awesome. This is a team that has a lot of pride and has a lot of playoff history. So, you know, we'll see what they can do tonight. They're in the semifinals, this best of three series against Bristol. They have the first game at home tonight with what looks like a pretty good home crowd. Hopefully they can get the jump on them. So we watch as Mike Curtis takes his warm-up tosses. Our cameraman for tonight's game on Nashua TV is Tim O'Neill, who has covered so many games here with us at home and stadium. And it, he seems to, well, I can, let me 
say he's the good luck charm. We've had a lot of playoff excitement on Nashua TV. Uh, they just played a clip of one of those games up on the new scoreboard here at Holman Stadium. And who knows, we might have a new video clip by the end of tonight. I'm sure these guys never seem to fail to produce a defensive gem somewhere along the way these young guys. Yeah, correct. And when you get into the playoff time, it's going to be that one error that, that can end up costing you the game. So they're dialed in here. This is a this is a loser go home series. Game one tonight. Taking uh, taking his spot in the batter's box. Logan Green out of UMass playing left field. We'll see what he can do against the right-handed pitcher Mike Curtis out of Assumption. Yes, it'll be Logan Green followed by Chris Davis and Mitch Guilmette, the one, two, three hitters. And the first pitch of the ball game is strike one on the inside corner from Mike Curtis, dealing to catcher Austin Young. Good way to start there, getting ahead of the batters. Slightly open stance for Green. Curtis pitches from the far first base side of the rubber. He pours another strike over the middle of the plate, about knee high. 0 and 2 to Logan Green. Once again, B.J. Mevert, the manager of the Silver Knights, indicated that you have to have a quality start here from Curtis if the Silver Knights are to have a shot. Uh, some nice off-speed pitch there that just missed down low. It looked like a breaking plate. ball that had Green frozen, but it didn't catch the plate. It was just down. And the 1-2 is outside. Trying to paint right there. Just missed it to the outside, even up at two and two. Let's see what young, um, Mike Curtis deals with here on the two two. Inside out swing, it's a high fly toward the right center field gap, but it's run down by Tom Blandini. Kind of made the catch on a back pedal, but he got to the spot, and it's one up, one down, and a long fly out by the leadoff batter for Bristol. Yeah, Blandini made a good adjustment there off the bat and ended up staying in the air long enough for him to adjust and make the play in right field. Chris Davis now out of Princeton, the center fielder, the number two hitter. He's a lefty. And uh, look out off the netting down there by the, the kids' play area. The Bristol Blues wearing uniforms that uh, immediately remind one of the Los Angeles Dodgers away uniforms. He waves at that one. That might have been on the outside corner, but no chance of making contact there for Chris Davis, who finds himself down in the count 0-2. That one's up and away. A lot of Chris Davis is in baseball and in sports, I think. I know there's one on the Oakland A's that spells it with a K, Chris Davis. Ground ball slowly hit right side. It is gobbled up by the first baseman, Mitch, um, excuse me, for uh, Nashua is Tom Joyce, and he takes it himself. So two up, two down in the first inning for Bristol. Yeah, Joyce making the play there in the field, but I might add through two batters right now, Curtis seems to be finding his spots, which is important. Bristol's going to put it in play, but if the defense stays solid behind him, that could be a good sign. Yeah, and as a defensive player, you love to see easy ground balls like that one. Mitch Gilmet from Central Connecticut State is the DH batting third here with two outs at the top of the first. Gumet coming into the game, 374, right Great over staff. the base. Joyce with another play, that one much more difficult. Yeah. Three up, three down for Bristol in the top of the first. We talked about being dialed in right there, and yeah. it seems like they're flashing some leather out there tonight. They know what's at stake here. It's, it's a best of three series. You don't want to blink because that ball gets by. That's extra bases. That's a runner in scoring position early. So great play there by the first base, made the last couple of plays, and uh, that was obviously Thomas Joyce, and nice to see. Yeah, Guilmet, the leading hitter for Bristol, and possibly knowing his opponent, Joyce was hugging the line, 
early in the game, not something you always see, but he must have known that he's a pull hitter. A pull hitter, he put it right where he thought he would, and that went right over the bag. Did. That could have caused some problems. That could have hit the bag. Could have hit the yeah. bag, been fair, and it could have caused some problems. So, obviously, erasing, you know, Bristol's best hitter is, is a good thing. You don't want your cleanup hitter coming up to bat with a runner in scoring position on second in the top of the first. So we'll see what the Silver Knights can do here in the bottom of the first. As we mentioned earlier, Mike Curtis out of Assumption. Uh, he'll be uh, on the bump for the Silver Knights. A 6.11 ERA, 2-3 and three record on eight appearances. Yeah, his number's not as good as the Bristol uh, starting pitcher tonight. Jason. No, uh, you know, it's funny. Baseball being a numbers game, you look at all the numbers, you try and crunch the numbers, and it's funny how things work out. You know, they talk about quality starts sometimes, and, and you know, you see guys with a win-loss record that might not be as good, but they've put up solid innings, they've kept your bullpen pen fresh, they've they've done the things they need to do to, yeah. to keep, you know, to keep things going. It doesn't always show in the wins and loss column, and sometimes it can be deceiving. So yeah. we'll, we'll see if that plays a part. The Silver Knights had several must-win games, not the least of which was their play-in game last night that they had a win in Pittsfield as Ted Williams starts the game by taking a ball inside. So as Tom King was mentioning in the open, Bristol's had four days to set up their pitching. They've got their ace out there right. in the game one of right. this. Uh, they're the two seed. So the Silver Knights uh, putting Curtis out there, and so far in the first inning, doing fine. Foul tipped into the mitt, and it's one ball and two strikes on the Silver Knights' second baseman, Ted Williams. Who you have lefty against lefty here, as Tom alluded to earlier, and that obviously usually faces the pitcher. Line drive, That's base hit the center. Great start right there for Ted Williams from Millersville University, the second baseman. That's a great way to start. Runner on first, got some something going here. Yeah, this is at bat number 200 even on the season that you just saw for Ted Williams. Of course, not counting his hit by pitches and walks and sacrifices, but he just got his uh, 51st hit, and that adds up to about a 304 average. We're gonna move the runner along here, John. Just out at first base by a running step is Cam Cook, leading hitter for the Silver Knights, gives himself up on a sack bunt. Interesting move there with nobody out in the bottom of the first to bunt the runner into scoring position. As, and as maybe yeah. as BJ alluded to earlier, scoring that first run is extremely important. You have a runner in scoring position with only one down in the bottom of the first. They're willing to concede that. Force Bristol to still have to make the play. Cook with good speed down the first baseline. You never know the nerves, the jitters, but they end up getting the out. But now they have a runner in scoring position. We'll see if Bonicki can do anything to start in shortstop. Bonicki batting in the three spot, takes a ball low. If Cook bunts that same bunt on the third, third base, base side, side of the infield, he's safe. That, that was yeah. only because it was on the first base side and they had a short throw, but. A short he, throw and a left-handed pitcher. True, yeah, he's facing it the whole way. Rip to right, it's gonna get and down. That's what we talked hit. about. They're gonna send him in. And that's gonna be one run and at least two bases. That's gonna be a three bagger. Bonicki is on his horse and he's gonna make it standing. He dives it anyway. Kyle Bonicki with a ripping triple to right field makes it one nothing. So the prognostication of manager BJ never it comes to fruition. We have to score first. The Silver Knights take care of that on a screamer down the right field line. Yeah, the lefty-lefty matchup, no problem for Kyle Bonicki in that at-bat. Bonicki pulled that thing and is now standing on third. And we'll see if uh, the left fielder, Anthony Maduri, can knock him in, make it a 2 nothing game. Still yeah. just one down here in the bottom of the first. To center, it's a blooper, and it's going to get down. 2-0, the Silver Knights lead on an RBI single by cleanup hitter Anthony Maduri. Yeah, Maduri just reached out, put that ball in play. That thing found no man's land down in short center field. The center field of the shortstop, no chance at that one. Yeah, you got to respect the cleanup hitter's power. So the center fielder was at a considerable depth, and the only person who had a shot at that was shortstop Jason Gonzalez. It was a hit all the way. Off the end of the bat, still only one out, two runs in for the Silver Knights. So check off the box, on, jump on them early, get a few runs. 
There's a high That's a rainmaker. <laughs> wow, that is up there. That would have hit the catwalks at Tropicana Field <laughs> where the Red Sox are playing tonight. That was D.H. Ryan Sullivan out of uh, Southern New Hampshire University popped out the center. Yeah. One thing I want to make note of, too, though, prior to that was Benicki's hustle to get to third and get himself into scoring position. You know, that ball falls in. Benicki's not scoring, but because he hustled all the way to third, that little blue pit produced another run. So 2 nothing here, two down in the bottom of the first. With yeah. uh, the first baseman, Thomas Joyce, made a couple of great plays defensively in that first inning out of Merrimack. Curveball misses outside. Thomas Joyce hitting in the sixth spot in the order. Six batters have come to the plate here in the bottom of the first inning for the Silver Knights. There goes the runner. Got a good jump. Throw to the second is not going to be in time. Diving and saving with a stolen base, Anthony Maduri. You can see right there, John, just how aggressive uh, the Silver Knights are being tonight. They're bunting with one out, runner on first. They're stealing bases. You know, this is this is a game that you're not coming back here, potentially, if you don't win this series. So they have something to prove here tonight against Bristol's better pitchers, one of, one of their best. The 1-1 taken for a strike by Joyce. To be fair to the catcher for Bristol, John Schoenfeld, the, the uh, Midori stole that off the pitcher that time. He got a good first move jump. I didn't look to see if they were holding him on either. I'm not, I'm not sure if they were or not. That pitch outside to uh, Austin Young out of UMass Lowell, the catcher for the Silver Knights. I'm not sure if they were holding him on. I, I, I gotta believe that they had a pretty good lead. Obviously real good speed. So the 2-2 pitch is in the dirt. Nice stop there by the catcher. And uh, Young was able to uh, check his swing, not go around. So Excellent that'll put scoop. it at a full count here, three and two. It's still Joyce up there. He's oh, is it Joyce yeah. now? I apologize. It's a, it's a lengthy at bat. He's there you working go. Out the of count. Merrimack. Oh, with the steal, right? The three two on the way. First base is empty, so Maduri will not go, and it's ball four. I got a little ahead of myself. Yeah. See, I was expecting. I knew, I knew it was coming. The prognostication yeah. continues. Joyce takes the bases on balls, runners on first and second. And now Austin Young from UMass Lowell is up. Uh, he will get his chance. He's also a left-handed batter. And another left-handed batter, Luke Tyree, is on deck. So not what you might expect. The ace pitcher for Bristol struggling in the first inning against a number of left-handed hitters in right. the Silver Knights lineup, whereas the uh, third or fourth starter for the Silver Knights Mike Curtis off to a great start. Right. Quick conference on the mound there by the catcher, Jeff Shanfelt, out of Lehigh, just to maybe calm his pitcher down a little bit, keep his composure. It's still the first inning. A lot of baseball left to be played here. Austin Young batted 292 through 16 games. Hits it high and deep to right. Center. It's deep. It's at the track, and it is caught. He caught it. Wow. The center fielder for Bristol wow. makes a great running catch, a clutch catch for Chris Davis, about 400 feet away. Austin Young gave that baseball a ride to just about the deepest part of Holman Stadium here, and what a great play by the center fielder. Goes back and gets it. It was like, he was almost like a dot on the horizon. Young had hit it so far, right in front of that Chick-fil-A sign. Does that mean free sandwiches for everybody? Does that have uh, any connotations? I don't, I, okay, I didn't know. Yeah. Maybe you know, any ball that gets hit up there. I think if there, it we went over sandwich? it, maybe. Okay, maybe. Yeah. I'm trying to see. A re yeah. Performance rehab's got a big sign out there. I don't think anybody wants to go. I don't think they pay for <laughs> outs, but it was a spectacular out, especially if you're a Bristol Blues fan. Credit to the Nashua Silver Knights fans who got on the team bus at about 2 o'clock yesterday for that two-and-a-half-hour ride to Pittsfield to witness the Silver Knights. It makes it. It makes a season. huge. It makes a huge difference, and I don't care what level it is, whether it's, you know, whether it's high school, college, professional ranks. It makes a difference when you travel well. The players appreciate it. It's they're away from home, and these guys. This is these are their second families, really. A lot of these guys not from the immediate area of Nashua, so they spend the summers here and. You know, the, the fans that are that, that come to all the games, they become like their second family. The, a lot of these guys, you know, become friendly with the fans. And so when, when they travel, uh, it gives you a sense of, of your home field. So, yeah, big kudos to the, 
Nashua Silver Knights fans for traveling out there and anxious to see how many of these uh, fans will make it out to Bristol for games two and possibly three. Yeah, we put that prediction out there that we would see a web gem sometime in this game. It's already seen one, and it's just the first inning. And a lot of leather being Bristol. flashed. Yeah, a lot of leather Actually, being flashed. Actually, no, we can say that uh, Tom Joyce at first base made a heck of a play. He too, sure did. Yep. To yep. get out number three in that inning, so a half of the inning. The hand-eye coordination of these young men is, you know, oftentimes overlooked. One of the hardest things to do is to hit a baseball, but then once that thing is hit, it's coming off that bat about 100 miles an hour. You still have to make the play in the field. That's true. So the shortstop for Bristol leads things off in the top of the second. It's Jason Gonzalez out of Vanderbilt. It's one of those big shortstops. He fills up the batter's box. And the 0-1 is outside. One ball and one strike. And we said earlier, you know, important that Mike Curtis have a, a good outing here, but also that he gets ahead of the batters, and he's done that. Curtis kicks and throws, misses low and away, two and one. It was a one, two, three top of the first inning for Curtis, so he's facing the cleanup hitter in the Bristol lineup leading off here in the second. And um, Gonzalez fouls it off over the admin building here. Just got a Coleman. piece of that one. Yeah. So we're even at two and two here for Gonzalez. Gonzalez batted 281 during 28 games on the season. He did have three homers. Hard hit grounder, the second baseman. Williams gobbles it up, throws the first in time. One up, one down in the top of the second for Bristol. Yeah, Gonzalez got a breaking ball there, waited on it. Sent it to the second baseman. Once again, getting the plays you're supposed to make. One out. Another indicator there that the field is in great shape. That ball bounced multiple times on the way to Williams, and they all look like true hops. You love to see that as an infielder. Here's a guy with a baseball name, Mitch, Mitch Williams. Williams. He's known, of course, as the, the wild, wild Thing, thing when he sure. pitched, right, yeah. for the Phillies. Doesn't have quite the same hair as, no. uh, as, as the Wild Thing did. but Or the position. He plays first, first base, base, whereas Mitch Williams, the major Fireballer. Leaguer, yeah, a mm. closer. Mitch so, wanted to give that thing a ride right there. And you remember one of the most famous things, unfortunately, that happens to closers sometimes. It happened at Eckersley. Remember what happened to Mitch Williams in the World Series? He got taken. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he got taken. It was deep. a walk-off by right. Toronto's Joe, Joe Carter. Joe Carter, right. And they, they make a tandem uh, show at, at baseball card signings, kind of like I think it was uh, the guy that, they hit the home run way back off of the Dodgers. The Dodgers. Oh, off the, the Giants win the Giants the pennant. win the pennant. Yeah, <laughs> right. they had something going. And then Eckersley and um, Smart, Eckersley and who's the guy? Uh, Kirk Gibson. They have a thing where they show up together. Turning a, a negative into a positive. Yeah, exactly. Right? There's a way to make money off it. <laughs> exactly. There's a beautiful strike over the outside corner. Makes it a full count. Williams didn't like that as far as a three-one hitter's pitch. It was paint. So now he has to face a 3-2 from Curtis, who has not yet allowed a base runner. And now he has. Ball four. Yeah, came inside on that one with the heat and uh, just missed. Just missed the inside part of the plate. So with one out here. That's as a, a pitch as a hitter. You get credit for taking it. But really, the thing is, you couldn't have hit it if you swung. So yeah, you you that would have hit your hands probably. Exactly. You know? so. You're taught as a batter to keep your hands you know, inside the ball and, and, and generate that bat speed and something like that's going to hit you right off the knuckles. That's a pitch where if you got a two-seam fastball, it might tail back over the plate, but it really looks like a four-seamer that Curtis is featuring. It's pretty straight. Hit high to left center, but it's going to hang up there. Tyree is going to give way to Maduri. The left fielder runs in and makes the catch two out. Yeah, just putting the ball in play and letting the fielders do the job behind him thus far is Mike Curtis. So two outs here, bottom of the second. Yeah, I did not get a chance to introduce. Ben Maycock flew out there. Out of UConn. Field. Out of UConn. He, he swung on the first pitch. Alex Loparco, the third baseman, to bat now with two out. 
Mitch Williams with a modest lead off of first. And that's down and in for ball one. And they are holding him on at first base, so. Lopaco has only been in two games prior to this for Bristol. He's three for six. That's the interesting thing is, you know, up till about two weeks ago, Strike. you can uh, you can continue to sign players late, and that's one of the things that's helped the Silver Knights over the last couple of years is bringing in some pitching help late. And, of course, we mentioned last time we were here that Silver Knights have used 27 pitchers this year, which is astronomical. Yeah. Opposite field, Liner's going to get down for a two-out hit. Stopping at second base is Williams. Loparco goes the other way. That is the first base hit of the game for Bristol. Two out and two on here in the second. That was a good piece of hitting right there by Loparco out of Western New England, the third baseman for Bristol, and setting something up right here for Jeff Shanfeld, the catcher out of Lehigh. Base knock here could get you a run and move the tying run into scoring position. We'll see what uh, Curtis has dialed up As for the you can catcher. See from the graphics here on Nashville TV, Silver Knights enjoying a 2 nothing lead. Bristol do have the potential tying runs aboard, but there are two outs. Shanfeld, the catcher for Bristol, is the eight hitter in the lineup. Curtis' pitch is just high for ball one. About mid 80s on the fastball for Curtis tonight. off the first base side of the rubber here as he gets ready to deal the Shanfeld. It's going to get out of play on the right side. One ball and one strike. The count. I think Tom Jeff King may Shanfeld. have gotten that one. I don't know. Maybe Is not. He close to that I don't one? Know. I would have expected him to dive over that wall to get it though. Count evens up at one and one here. Two out in the bottom, uh, excuse me, the top of the second. Curtis peering in for the sign from Austin Young at the belt and the one one. Breaking Ooh, ball slow. on the inside Breaking corner. Ball. Wow. And disagreeing with the call is Shanfeld, but he's down in the count, one and two. Boy, that must have just grabbed the inside part of the plate, the black part of the plate, because that was a that thing broke late and broke slow. Yeah, that was around the corner of the building, grabbed hold of the ledge and slipped in the window. Mm. Coming That's back. That's outside and low, so two and two. Two outs, two on here in the second. Twos are wild, a two-nothing lead also for the Silver Knights. The lights are on at Holman. It's getting darker earlier as we work our way through August. Sun not at all a factor here early in the game as it was during the regular season at this time. Curtis, the 2-2 pitch on the way. Popped up, right side, Joyce calling for it in fair territory, three outs. Bristol leaves two on base, the Silver Knights lead it still 2-0 as we go to the bottom of the second. Great job of pitching there by Curtis, you know, the location of and the changing of his pitches and the speeds of the pitches. And that yep. ball was hit off the inside part of the bat, just lazy pop fly into the infield. That's exactly what you want. So through two innings, Curtis proving to be up to the task. And uh, the Silver Knights go into the bottom of the second with a two nothing lead. I might add the last time these two teams met in the semifinals was in 2015. It was a one round game then and the Silver Knights lost seven nothing. So we already know that that's not gonna happen. Yeah. Would be nice to maybe return the favor. Right, <laughs> there's a chance. Yeah, you mentioned earlier, John, the condition of Holman Stadium is uh, it's immaculate. When you, when you look at the work that's been done here and the, and the upgrades to the ballpark, the, the new scoreboard, the extracurriculars for the fans during, during the games, uh, they really cater to, to the folks here in Nashville. It's, this is really a gem, and, and uh, the city has done a real nice job with, with putting this team together. And, They've been rewarded with a pretty solid product here. You have a team that's won 
three of these championships and, and they've been to the playoffs seven straight seasons so uh, and, and largely with, with different different guys each year. So um, they're doing something right here. The leadership is in place, the general manager, the manager right down to the to the players. And um, it's nice to see Nashville put this product on the field. Leading off from Marymount University, center fielder number seven, Luke Tyree. Luke Tyree gets leadoff duty here in the bottom of the second inning, the center fielder for the Silver Knights. Also a left-handed hitter. Uh, Luke out of Marymount University. Mm. Look, you got the outside part of the plate there. Takes it for strike one. Pope out of Babson working ahead. And that one just fouled into the bullpen area for the Silver Knights. Quickly 0-2 on Tyree. Got out in front of it, had a pretty good read on that ball. It'll be interesting to see here if he comes with something a little off speed. Did he go? No. Did not. Still up there. One ball and two strikes. He brought some inside cheese on that one, so. Three umpires here for this FCBL playoff game. One at first base, one at third, and one behind the plate. That's going to be playable for the third baseman, Loparco. One up, one down for the Silver Knights here in the second. A lot of room to operate there in the uh, just outside the foul lines on both sides. So that ball had no chance of getting out. And Loparco makes the play. So Tom Blandini, last night's hero, who went pesky pole pesky on pole. Pittsburgh Suns in the seventh inning in a 2-2 game, hit a home run down the right field line that nicked the foul pole 305 feet away. And that led to a eventual 5-2 victory for the Silver Knights in the play-in game. That's a generous strike call. It is. It's great when your number nine hitter can do that, though, isn't it? When, yeah. when you can, when you can, your number nine hitter can come up and do those kinds of things that, and hacking away at that pitch on the inside corner. Yeah, quickly one and two right now to Blandini. Yeah. During the regular season, Tom appeared in 36 games and batted 154. He didn't have any regular season homers. So before what have that you one he hit last night? What have you done for me lately, deal? <laughs> yeah. Throw all that stuff right. out the window once the postseason starts with a 1-2 count here against the Bristol Ace as Gennaro throws high for ball two. Works the count even here now at 2-2. Two 2-0 and two. Two the Nashville Silver Knights, bottom of the second. Ooh. Out in front. Yeah. He Strike fooled three. him. He yeah. fooled him there. That was a, a great hook on that breaking ball. And Blandini, as you mentioned, out front of it. And quickly here, there's, there's two outs at it looks like it looks like the Pope is settling in a little bit. So as we mentioned again, you go back to it, it was important for Nash to get out to that early lead. Ted Williams, the leadoff hitter taken all the way here as we start our second time through the order. Williams singled and scored to begin the ball game. Scored on a triple by Kyle Bonicki, the three hitter after Cam Cook had sacrificed him to second base. Another line drive, but this one's gonna hang up a little bit and it's caught. Mm. Williams hit that one too well in the same sort of lane as he got the base hit earlier. And it's hard luck out there for Williams. Chris Davis, the center fielder out of Princeton, got a really good jump on that. That ball hanged up there just long enough for him to make that play. And you know, one of the Williams got, looked like Williams got started off there with a couple of breaking balls. And uh, again, you can't stress it enough, the importance of pitching. They always say that good pitching beats good hitting any day. So something is going to give here today. You have a team that batted 290 throughout the season against a, a, a pitcher for Bristol who, when he's dialed in, seems to be pretty good. So we'll see what the... Silver Knights can do here defensively in the top of the third, and obviously they, they hope for continued success out of their starter, Mike Curtis, who's done a pretty nice job here keeping the ball in the park and letting his defense make some plays for him. Curtis with those old school stirrup socks. 
It's a good look. Yeah, it is a good look for him. That's the one thing, you know, you look at baseball players, it's not, you, you hear the word uniform, you get the different styles, the way the guys wear their pants, the way they wear their socks, some guys bend the cap, some guys straight, you know, straight brow the cap. Some guys just have different socks on all together out there. Yeah, it's a good thing they don't have the NFL uniform. Oh, they'd be fines, they'd be, f everybody here would be fine. <laughs> yeah. The, you notice uh, during the regular season, the Silver Knights have all kinds of fun promotions and uh, activities and games going on between innings. A little bit more of a serious atmosphere here in the playoffs. I think, you know, the, the, the task at hand is it's important for Nashua has a title to defend. A lot of yeah. people forget this team won the title last year. They're the defending champions. So, yeah, more of a positive or, or a serious feel to this, although something tells me they will, they will do something at some point here. It's bonus baseball, and it's about the baseball tonight Right. for these fans who have been with the team all season long. Maybe their last chance to see him at home. That's still to be determined. Let's hope that's not the case. Right. The nine hitter for Bristol grounds Ooh. it up the middle and through for a base hit for Mark Tomosa, the second baseman. Yeah, Tomosa went right back up the middle. Heard a, heard a great thing today on, on hitting and when you're in a, a batting slump. I think it was they asked Ted Williams, you know, what do you do when, when you're in a slump? And first of all, Ted, or excuse me, it's Collier Stremski. My apologies. It was Collier Stremski. And the advice that was given to him was try to hit it right back at the pitcher. When you, if you're in a slump and you're not seeing the ball well, when you hit, don't try and pull, don't try to push, don't try to wait on it, hit it right back at the pitcher. And that was his advice if you're ever in a batting slump. So it straightened him out a lot. Good way to start. So Curtis working to the leadoff batter in the order for the second time tonight. Logan Green, who flied out to the right fielder to begin the ball game. Batting with one on and nobody out here in the top of the third as Bristol tries to even things up here or chip away at the 2-0 deficit. Green out of UMass. Decent speed. There goes the runner. It's a breaking ball. The throw is going to go into center, center field. Center field. The runner's going to try for it. Here's a throw, and it's airmail, but good I'll tell backup. You what, great backup. Great backup right there by the pitcher. That's fundamentals, and Curtis knew right away I got to go back up that third baseman. That throw's online. They may have had him there. I agree. If it's right to the third baseman, they had a shot. Certainly, Tyree put a lot of velocity behind that throw, but it's going to go as an E2. Stolen base for Mark DeMosa to get him to second. Arrow on the Silver Knights catcher to get him to third and an opportunity here for Bristol to get at least one run with man at third and nobody out. Logan Green awaiting the 1-1, fouls it off to the right. That same fly ball that he hit in the first inning would be good enough to plate a run here. And Curtis looked like he was going for the strikeout there with the 85 mile an hour fastball. One of the things that you're taught when you play baseball, and it's it's a funny game, but is to try and win the inning. You know, you can't always look at one singular inning. You know, whether you're up big, down big, it's a close game. Try and win the inning, and that's that's what Bristol. He can't find that ball right now. That's going to score a run. Heads up, base running by Mark Tomosa. That ball was nor normally not far away from the catcher enough to score a run, but Tomosa recognized that. Austin Young didn't know which way the ricochet had gone. Young had a 50-50 chance there, right or left, and he chose left. The ball went right. So. Unfortunately, yes. So it goes as a wild pitch, and that makes it a 2-1 game. Bristol's got their first run. So a couple of errors. Grounded wild slowly. Pitch. It's going to be a tough play. For Benicki, that but is he an makes outstanding it. play by Benicki. That was not an easy play. A slow roller, glove away from his body, had to come across his body and throw that thing to first on a dime, and he did. Boy, that was an outstanding defensive play right there by the shortstop. And Benicki. to add to it, the batter was the leadoff batter in the Bristol order with good speed. So another goal star defensive play for the Silver Knights. That's the first out of the third inning. Chris Davis now, who grounded out to third. Uh, excuse me, the first baseman his first time up. Lazy liner caught by Benicki. Two outs. He reached out there, had some funny English on that. Kind of dove down, but Benicki in the right spot. 
You know, one of the things that you always talk to youngsters about too is catch the ball with your glove and then cover that glove up, which Bonicki did. Good sound, solid fundamentals by the shortstop. Two down here in the top of the third. Yeah, good point because with all the spin on that, you one-handed, right. it might just squeeze, you know, dribble out of the glove. Well, we've seen what can happen when, when the ball does, you know, funny things out here. They've put together a, uh, a couple of uh, scoring chances. And this is the time of the evening when it pays to have young eyes because it's twilight. The lights haven't taken full effect yet. Right. And you could... Well, I'm speaking for older folks who still play baseball. You could lose a ball up in the sky, or, you know, this time of night. That's way outside, and tracking it down was Austin Young, the Silver Knights catcher. One run in in the inning for Bristol, two to one. Silver Knights still up by a run here. Game one of a best of three semifinal playoff series in the Futures Collegiate Baseball League. Healthy hack there by. Mitch Guilmet, the three hitter, the best hitter by average by far on the Bristol team, 374 coming in. That's blistered a very one. healthy batting average. Yeah, he blistered one down the first baseline, and Tom Joyce robbed him of extra bases. Hits that one hard, but right at Great Williams. Great play by Williams at second. He had the ball almost caught him. The hit was hit so hard, but a good play, and it's the third out of the inning. So we go to the bottom of the third, two to one, Silver Knights still up by a run. Good soft hands there by Ted Williams, the second baseman for the Silver Knights. He, that was a nice clean gather, composed himself before he, before he threw it. You know, a lot of times guys will try and rush that thing over to first, especially if you're down on a knee. He knew he had plenty of time because that was smoked off the bat. Made a nice throw to first. So. We'll see here, as we talked about before, can Nashville win the inning? They're down one nothing as far as inning as the inning goes, so we'll see if they can put something together. Yeah. Uh, looked like Pope was kind of coming into his own last inning. And just as you mentioned, we got a little musical chair game oh, they going still on have down some there. Games going. They got some games down yeah. there. The uh, the the favorites. This one is definitely a favorite, the musical chairs. <laughs> I'm going to pick, let's see, the young lady in the pink skirt. I think she's going to win the whole thing. I'm going to go with the kid in the red shorts. <laughs> I thought you were going to say the red shirt. <laughs> oh, oh, what we got? All right. Yep. <laughs> oh, you, my guy's out. And uh oh. She won, I think, by default. Thank you very much. <laughs> The tiebreaker's age. <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. So there you go. Little musical cheers in the Gate City, bottom of the third of the 2017 FCBL semifinal matchup between the Bristol Blues and the Nashua Silver Knights. Yes, this is a game of musical chairs. Two to win one, one seat left to get through the semifinals. Finding the hole on the right side, first Cam. pitch. That was that, uh, Cook. that Cook, he went the other way with that one, John, and yep. just put it where nobody was. So Bonnecke, the shortstop out of Clark University now, have a chance to move Cook along. It's always good when you can start the inning off with a base runner tripled his first time up down the right field line. Takes a strike. That was kind of over the upper middle of the plate. Looked like Pope came right at him there too. So we'll see if Bonnecke can repeat the magic. Ooh. And he was about maybe a little bit above the strike zone. Foul straight back 0-2. So now Pope can do some things. He can play a little bit. Not an aggressive throw over to first, but a throw nonetheless to keep Cook honest. Yeah, you know, um, Cook looking at, at Gennaro, he's trying to figure out what, he's, mm. what his move is. And, uh, for me, I, I could never figure the lefties out. They look like they're throwing a first when they're throwing home and vice versa. So it tends to freeze the running game a lot of times. You always look Unless for tips and gamble. tells, but everybody's different. 
Oh. Lopped it to center. It's wow. going to get down for a hit. I'm going to tell you right now, that is a great piece of hitting by Bonnecke. Uh Pope worked him outside. He worked him, he worked him every which way, and Bonnecke just put the bat on the ball. So Pope's now, at the yeah. center. He's two for two. So nobody out here, John. Two on, nobody out. And Anthony Maduri is up. He had a blue pit to left center to play to run his first time up. And uh, Gennaro's got to be a little frustrated. He only allowed two hits the last time, or on June 1st when these two pitchers matched up last. He's already allowed five hits here to the Silver Knights. And here's great another bunt attempt. Great bunt. Going to third in time. Wow. What an arm that on was Shanfield. a great play. A great bunt and a great play. If he could have pushed that maybe a little further to his right, yes. would have forced the catcher to go to first. Big play by the Bristol catcher, Shanfeld, to cut down the lead runner. Mm. That had the potential to be bases loaded and nobody out. You gotta Instead, think. Sullivan batting with one out, men on first and second. Good speed on the base pass, too. That shows you just how good a play that is. And that is Very a drive high. right there. Very deep to right. That's Sullivan got some drives legs. it to the wall, and it is gone for a three-run home run. Ryan Sullivan. See you later. With light tower power, he skied out to the center fielder his first time up. Nobody was going to catch that one. Wow. Win the inning. <laughs> there you go. So the Silver Knights now ahead in the inning. To make things a little more interesting, that bunt had played out well. That would have been a granny. Holy Earl Weaver, <laughs> a huge three-run home run in game one of the semifinal playoffs for Ryan Sullivan. That thing just kept carrying and carrying right out of here. You have to wonder now what uh, Austin Pope, what his mindset is now. He's given up six runs, or excuse me, five runs on six hits. You've given up some cheap ones, some bloopers. Yep. And he comes back with a first pitch breaking ball that looked good from here, but obviously doesn't matter for me. Mike Gennaro. On the outside corner. Big swing and a miss. I think Joyce wanted to go back to back with uh, Sullivan with that swing. And strike three, three pitch strikeout. Maybe a little anger on that pitch yeah, there maybe from Gennaro. Excuse me, that was Michael, Michael Gennaro. Yeah, yeah, I apologize, I got the wrong guy. But nevertheless. Oh, you said Gennaro also. So uh, you must have a Mike Pope that's a uh, a former player Boy, or something. Boy, that, that could be. <laughs> you mentioned the age and the had. eyes not working right, John. That's about right. You're right on par there. I'm sure he's a good athlete wherever he is. <laughs> and continuing to throw, throw strikes is Gennaro. And another strike. He's just almost energized by that Sullivan homer. It is a 5-1 to one lead right now, as you see on your screen here on Nashua TV. The Silver Knights enjoying an embarrassment of riches as far as offense against the number one pitcher for Bristol here in the third inning. And you said it, Coach, win the inning. Yeah. They had given up a run, you know, no guarantees, but three spot on the board. Very high oh boy. to right. This one may not get out, though. It is another home here. run. Another home run. Thomas Joyce goes back to back with Sullivan, and boy, oh boy, is the ball carrying tonight. That one fooled me. Looked like a long fly ball to right field, and it just kept carrying, and Gennaro takes the ball from the umpire. Says, what do I gotta do to get an out here? The Silver Knights looking like the Washington Nationals here tonight. They go back to back home runs to right field and make it a seven to one game. Yeah, Gennaro at this point just trying to get out of the inning. Six to one rather, they had seven up there fully. It is a solo home run by Joyce, of course following Sullivan's blast. And Gennaro throwing, he actually struck out um, Thomas Joyce. It was Young that hit the home run. So my bad. 
boy, you and I. Yeah. I don't think we'll be yeah. getting called up to Nesson anytime no, soon. No, huh? Jeez. Huh? Sorry, Austin Young. Home run. Oh. To make it six to one. Silver Knights leading Bristol here in inning number three. Four runs in in the inning. That's just good stuff right there for the home team. Oh, good solid pitch there by Gennaro. I'm sure there are a couple times you probably wished I was calling him the wrong name. But uh, yeah. I'll tell you, the tough Silver Knights did some the, damage there. Yeah, tough inning for the Bristol starter, giving up a three-run homer and a solo home run. Did mix in a couple of strikeouts, but a rough inning. Nice play by the catcher, Shanfeld, but the tail of the tape on the scoreboard, 6-1. to one, The Silver Knights enjoying a pretty big lead for a playoff game. Not, I can't say it was expected. Well, you know, it's a best of three series, so obviously it's not a one-and-done situation. And this game far from over, not even halfway through yet. And, and we saw last inning, Bristol had some runners on the bases. We're able to get a run off a couple of errors. A you know, wild pitch. That was Austin Young's first home run of 2017 here at Holman Stadium. And he picked a great time great to Great time it. to do that. Just like Blandini last night in the one game play in. Coming up with his first of the summer. These, Mike Curtis looking for a shutdown inning here as we go to the top of the fourth. These guys are all here for, for one purpose and one purpose only. They, they know that this, this organization has had a lot of success and guys want to come play here because of that success. I talked to manager B.J. Neverett last Saturday and he showed me in his office they put the scorecards up of every game that they win during the year, and certainly this year, not as many scorecards posted to the wall, but when you think about where we are right now, you need to post four more scorecards, right? And, 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 and you're the champ. So That's true. It's a second season. It's a new season. Everybody's undefeated. First pitch swinging. Gonzalez fouls it. Just foul. The third base umpire right on top of the play. Jason Gonzalez grounded out to the second baseman his first time up. The four, five, six hitters do up for Bristol in this inning. And again, we talk about the importance of a pitcher working ahead, getting ahead in the count. Ground ball on two high hops, but Bonnicky charges it, makes a nice throw on the run. One up, one down. Here Not the, the great fourth. play by Bonnicky, and that wasn't a that wasn't a scorched uh, grounder to the shortstop. He was playing deep in the hole and had to charge it hard. And good body control, good positioning, made a made a, a difficult play look relatively easy. Mitch Williams up now for Bristol. He walked his first time up. Takes a ball outside and low. Silver Knights defending Williams straight away at all positions, except a shade to the opposite field and center is Tyree. That's strike one on the outside corner. Questioning the call a bit was Williams. That might be an indication of where they intend to pitch him too. The one one sure is sure enough. Inside outed on a line to the left fielder, Maduri. Two outs. 85 on the fastball there from Curtis. Good control. He kept it low and away. Uh, Curtis working ahead of the batters, yeah. allowing his defense behind him to make solid plays. Good, sound, fundamental baseball. Ben Maycock batting now with two outs and nobody on in the fourth. Slide out to the left fielder, the opposite way, his first time up tonight. Maycock plays his baseball at the University of Connecticut. He's a Husky. You know, it's interesting, Bristol coming in as the two seed here. Nashua having to play the play-in game, but really 
not a huge difference in terms of records coming in. Bristol coming in with, at 28 and 22, and Nashua after the last win, uh, 27 and 27. So, not too far apart. As we talked about earlier as well, this was a 4-3 series. With Bristol coming out on top during the regular season. And that's it's a hard shot to right center field. That one has a chance. It is going. It is gone over the second tier of billboards at Holman Stadium. Getting all of that one, Ben Maycock makes it a seven to a six to two game here at Holman. A Mid solo shot with two outs. Three Mid home runs now in the game. Balls are carrying tonight. Maycock gave that thing a ride. He sure did. That was 400 feet plus, probably 410 on that one. Maybe 420. Great shot there by Ben Maycock. I might also add a hometown guy, but nobody on base when that happened. Right. Five run lead when that happened. High fly to center. This one's going to stay in the ballpark in a tough time of night, but finding it, Tyree makes the catch for out number three. So One run go. in in the inning. Can they still win this inning, Coach? They I mean, it's 1-0. Why not? Nashua gets a run. <laughs> we get it back. We're right yeah. where we started. It's, uh, and, you, and you also have to ask yourself, you know, where's Gennaro's head right now? Mm. Is he... And we'll see if he if he takes the hill here. I haven't seen him yet going into the bottom of the fourth. Be interested to see if they if they make a, a pitching change here. I have not seen uh, Michael Gennaro. Yeah, he hasn't come out yet. Looks like we do have someone somebody. coming in from the bullpen. Yeah. So Gennaro, yeah. short night. It's going to be a right-hander, it looks like. Short night for Gennaro. He gave up six runs on seven hits and two of them home runs. Nash was scoring just about every way possible. He tried to manufacture some runs, laying down some bunts, stealing some bases, getting the long ball. It looks like number, I want to make sure, 20... 28, 28 potentially, let's say, on the follow-through here. Let's say 28, 28. right? And uh, that that is Brandon Grover, I believe. Uh, listed here as an infielder. Hmm. So, according to our stat sheets, anyway. Interesting. Unless they changed it here. After three full innings in Worcester, the Worcester Bravehearts lead the Brockton Rocks three to nothing. So Worcester jumping out ahead in their game. Right now. You know, um, I don't see a Grover in the pitching staff. So I'm with you. It's right. a little bit of a mystery. Listed as the an infielder. He might have, they might have switched the switched jerseys numbers. or something on it. A little tomfoolery on the part of the Bristol squad. <laughs> Let's see here. We have just about every stat imaginable up here at our disposal. Right down to what they had for breakfast this morning. <laughs> but unfortunately, we can't seem to find the name right now. Yeah, because the jerseys so might number be twenty eight. the numbers, right. you know. So maybe we can talk we'll to some folks around. up here in the press box. We do know that Tom Blandini is leading off for the Silver Knights here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Six to two, the score. All right, this update. Uh, Kyle Hag, the pitcher okay. for Bristol. Kyle Larry Hag, number, number 28. Not listed in our official stats here. He's, uh, he is listed. Oh, he is. Okay, yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. Kyle Hag. There he is. 0-1. He's pitched three games. 
started one and one complete game to his credit as well. And that is given a ride. Very deep to right. The right fielder couldn't find it at first. It's over his head, and it is gone for a home run. Another home run for the Silver Knights. Plantini has homered. Two Wait a second. A they're sending him back to second. They're oh, they're going to say two. They're saying a double. Wow. You know, it must have bounced on the track and went over. I completely. The right fielder loses it. I'm not going to find it either. The right fielder put his arms up. I couldn't tell if he was bracing himself up right. against the wall, but usually he when they put their arms up like, like that, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's a ground it. rule double, right? Ben Maycock actually took a few steps in as that ball was struck. Having by all Blandini. kinds of, of problems out there tonight. Uh, I was going to say Blandini hit home runs in two straight nights. What a great story that would have been. But he puts himself in scoring position with nobody out here in the fourth. Chance to match Bristol again for runs scored in the inning. The leadoff batter with a double. Bunning as if for a hit mm. toward the third base side was Ted Williams. Yeah, your leadoff hitter again trying to move that runner along into scoring position from third. And... Obviously likes his chances as well to try and outrun the throw. Williams has hit the ball hard twice to center, once for a hit, and he scored a run, and also lined out to the center fielder, Chris Davis. The pitch is on the corner. Oh, a little bit of gamesmanship there, too, trying to maybe play with the third baseman, the first baseman a little bit, trying to get their alignments off. I think both pitching staffs are aware that that outside corner is up for grabs. They, they're getting the calls. 0-2. Hag's pitch is high for ball one. That was at 81 on the radar gun here at Holman. So we'll see what Hag does here. Heading the count at one and two. Ted Williams a 300 hitter for the Silver Knights this summer. And 200 at bats. Could you have a better baseball name? No. <laughs> Slow hit ground ball. He bombed it a little bit. Him and yep. safe at first. Ate him right up, John. Ate him right up. Brought it up into his chest. And the transfer from glove to throwing hand was not as smooth as obviously he would have liked. And because of that, Speedy Williams is on first. Slow hit ground ball as soon as he made the first bobble. Gonzalez knew with William Speed he was in trouble. It's got to go. It wasn't an easy play, but it's got to go as an E6. And now the Silver Knights have runners on the corners with nobody out, first and third. So are we going to play double play depth here and concede the run? What? Let's see how Bristol plays this. Hmm. High pop up mm. in the infield. I don't think that's going to do it. And they will not send the runner. One out. I thought that came off the end of the barrel a little bit. Cam Cook pops out. Kyle Bonnecke has tripled and singled and scored two runs tonight. Bonnecke, one of those players who came from another team, I believe, uh, from last year. Is that correct? Uh, Tom would know. I always defer to the I want to say reading one of, uh, of the one Knights. of Tom's articles. I think it was Bonnicky. I don't want right. to speak out of place, but yeah, Bonnicky having a real solid night behind uh, in the field and at bat. Right at, at shortstop and at the plate, he's been spectacular tonight. Finished fourth in the league for batting average at 3.58. And he continues the hitting right into the postseason. There goes the runner, fouled hmm. off to the left. And so Williams will have to trot back to first base. Silver Knights trying to add to their four-run lead here. They have had three balls go over the fence tonight in right. Two are homers. One was a ground rule double. The ball is carrying. And this, this really is a, a, a big uh, situation here for, for Hag and Bristol. They... This could, uh, this could be the breakthrough inning here. So Hag looking to get a double play here, get him out of the inning. The 1-1. Hit hard to center. It's going to get deep, and it is over no. the head of the center fielder. One run is in. 
The I think second runner's send being him. waved home, and he is going to score He's easily. In. A two-run double to straight away center field for Bonneke. Kyle Bonneke, his third hit of the game. Home He's run got away three. from him for the cycle, right? Exactly. Yeah. I just jinxed him, though. I think I could wear my <laughs> hat on backwards or something to wow. negate the hex. What a shot by Kyle Bonneke. Wow. So, Silver Knights win the inning. There you go. They do it again. 8-2 right now. And, and that was the at-bat we talked about. A double play, you're still in this. Now you're looking at a six-run deficit, another runner in scoring position with only one out. Anthony Maduri, the batter, bunted into a fielder's choice his last time up. This is going to advance the runner, but there are now two outs as he grounds out to second. Here's Ryan Sullivan, who actually struck the biggest blow tonight, a three-run homer in the third inning. To continue his power display all throughout the summer of 2017 in which he hit 15 regular season home runs. Sure, Southern New Hampshire University enjoys having him on their squad. 15 homers in 161 at bats. What's the per on that? That's just over 10, right? Like 10.1 uh, like By my math, it's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Big swing and a yeah. miss. So it's 0-2. Hag came right at him with that one. On Sullivan with two outs, runner at third base, trying to add to a six-run lead for the Silver Knights. Ground ball, left side, it's going to be trouble. fair. Long throw in time, that and a nice a scoop on the other end. Standing scoop right there by the Bristol first baseman, Mitch Williams, out of Fairfield. He uh, had to make a great player. That was going to be another run and another base runner. So, and Loparco on the. Beginning end of that play at third base. So it is the third out of the inning. The Silver Knights do leave a base runner at third. But as my partner Jason Roby pointed out, they won the inning again. They gave up a run on the top of the fourth. They scored two on a two-run double by Kyle Bonnicky in the bottom of the inning. And if you're Bristol, that's got to be really disheartening. Disheartening from a couple of standpoints. One, they've shown the ability to, to just hit bloopers for base hits and, and runs and they've shown the ability to drive the baseball to the farthest parts of the park. So they're, they're not all cheap ones. They're, they're, getting, they're getting a hold of this pitching staff from Bristol. And Welcome, everybody. Show. If you're watching this game on Wednesday, August 9, you're watching it live on Nashua ETV. Our cameraman is Tim O'Neill. I'm John Collins along with Jason Roby and Tom King. Our executive producer, Pete Johnson, is also here. Or you may be watching it on replay. We have found out that we are being seen literally across the country, including by the California Department of Corrections. Outstanding. Welcome. I know I had a friend, uh, was, uh, he lives in Topsfield, I thought you were going to say that was a part of the... Oh, no, I was going to say that. <laughs> that was a dangerous segue right there. Uh, I have a friend that lives in Topsfield, Mass. He saw us uh, a few days ago. Actually, while we were here doing the um, game that was shortened by lightning, lightning he was strikes, watching yes. another game that we had done earlier in the season. Oh, no was kidding. USA versus Japan, the college all-star game. And, and, and what a great gem to bring to the city. Oh, that was a highlight, too, of the summer. This Those is players, many of them, who will be seeing in probably professional baseball uniforms not in the not-too-distant future. This is catcher Jeff Shanfelt, who's leading off the inning for Bristol. But one of the things, too, is, you know, it's one thing to play the game. You come in, you play the game, and that's it. But both teams put on a, a, a clinic for the youngsters in the area, and I think that is just, that's such a positive thing for the city and a positive thing, really, for the sport of baseball. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of talk about how America's pastime isn't really, you know, the, the number one played sport anymore, so on and so forth. And they need to do things to, you know, shorten the innings or not shorten the innings, but, but, but make the games a little, uh, a little shorter. Um, doing things like that will, will keep interest in the game for years to come. Because I guarantee you, those youngsters that came out for that, that clinic, that's a day they won't soon forget. 
and uh, I'm sure it was a positive experience for, for many of and for all of those youngsters. Well put. Jeff Shanfelt looking at a 3-1 pitch now from Mike Curtis, and he mm. takes a walk. So not what you want to do with the leadoff batter with a six-run lead. Yeah, the catcher, Austin Young, tried to frame that one, but not getting the call. And here's Tomosa, who singled and came all the way around to score after a stolen base, an error on a throw that was into center field in the wild pitch. The nine batter in the order making things happen for Bristol tonight. One of the two runs scored. It feels like, it feels like one of those nights, John, where no lead feels safe for some reason. Well, the way the ball's carried, I know what you're talking about. And that one made the people in the front row here at Holman Stadium flinch. A foul straight back to the screen. I like to tell this to people, too. If you've ever come to Holman Stadium and right. watched one of these games in the fr front row, right. you are closer to the catcher than the pitcher is. That's how close you are. You are less than 60 feet from the catcher. It is a great seat, but you have to trust that net. I, uh, and, and, and keep your hands off the railing, too, because right. it could come back and hit you uh, between That's the net. Tough play, ball. and it's called foul by the home wow. plate umpire. Wow, that nice pick I became on the a other fan end right there. Joyce. That was a great pick by Joyce. Yeah. Wow. And uh, exactly, actually fortunate for the batter, Tomosa, that, that it was foul, because I think we just saw Cam Cook and Tom Joyce make that play. Right. You know, to, to piggyback on what you were saying, John, is the other thing you have to be aware of when you come to games is if you're not sitting behind that net. Oh, right, Baseballs, right. bats, you know, yeah. you always have to pay attention. And uh, There will be one or two balls that go into the stands alarmingly fast, and hopefully most of the time they'll find an empty seat, but not always. Right. So you do have to pay attention. Look out. We almost and saw there, one right there. There you see it almost Ooh. right there. They just make that net high enough, I yeah, think, most yeah. of the time. Although I think maybe we'll get lucky. I don't well, know. It has happened, but it's it's funny how rare it is. You know, it, it doesn't seem like the net is all that high right. compared to where, but it usually is just high enough. It has happened. The balls have come right back here. And, uh, and uh, it, oh, <laughs> better stay away from Tim's camera because, <laughs> oh, no, we're getting uh, hey. talking, we're talking one back here, I think. Oh, now, uh, now on the ricochet, on that the almost rebound? hit three people coming back. Yeah, you got to watch out for the rebounds, Jeez. too, huh? So much Well, we got to watch what we talk about because yeah, exactly. everything we're talking about seems to be coming <laughs> to fruition here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and two now. Short lead off of first for Shanfield, as you might imagine, with a six run deficit and being the catcher of the opposing team, doesn't want to get caught off the bag. One ball and two strikes to Tomosa, who's battling Curtis here. It's about the sixth pitch of this at bat. Hard hit, single to left. Yeah, Tomosa. Gave that thing a nice ride, pulled it into left field. And UMass Lowell, second baseman, got something going here. Yeah, he's two for two. Let's see why he is on the UMass Lowell squad. And he's got me curious about. He's batting in the nine spot, but he's he's hitting the ball he's really well. Hitting the ball well. So with nobody out here in the fifth inning, the Bristol Blues just keep on coming. They are down eight to two, but. Not making life easy for the Silver Knight starter, Mike Curtis, as he checks the lead runner and has to deal with the leadoff batter in the order, Logan Green. It gets that hit by pitch. Yeah, that's going to load the bases. 71 mile an hour curveball. That didn't curve. It didn't curve. It hits his lead leg. So now you have the bases loaded. Nobody out here in the top of the fifth. This is a huge moment. It is. The two hitter, Chris Davis, will be followed by. Bristol's best hitter, Mitch Guilmette. So a tough spot for Mike Curtis. There is bullpen activity for the Silver Knights. Don't think we'll be seeing any bunts. <laughs> I think you're right. They are going to concede a run and go for the double play in the middle of the infield are the Silver Knights in at the corners at first and third. That one misses, mm. low and away. 85 miles an hour on the fastball from Curtis. One ball and no strikes on Chris Davis, who has lined out Softly to short and grounded out to the first baseman. Hasn't really squared one up tonight. And Jack knifes out of the way of ball two. So Curtis struggling 
mightily here and he's going to get a visit from pitching coach Kyle Jackson. Top of the fifth inning. Looking up at the line score there have been eight half innings played only three with zeros in them. There's been a <laughs> lot of offense tonight. Balls carrying like no other night we've seen all summer here at home and stadium two home runs by the Silver Knights a home run and a ground rule double also in the game one ground home run by Bristol and a um, a ground rule double also by the Silver Knights so balls flying around the yard we all saw some great catches on the sure warning did. track yeah sure did some great defense out there and that's playoff baseball it's what you expect at this time with the final four teams that remain these two teams have sharpened their sticks late in the season and they are hitting the baseball. Owen misses up and away and it's a 2-0 count. And nowhere to put him. You want to make him want to make him earn this run and get you something. Do. You want to get something out of it, at least an out. There you go. At the top of the zone, right down the middle. Three balls in one strike. Pitching coach Kyle Jackson went out there. What do you think he said to him? Uh, six run lead. Deep breath. Pro strikes. Ground ball right side is going to find oh, its way through. Geez. Two runs are going to score. The throw is not in time. Goes to the back. They're going to get three here potentially. John, let's see. And nope. they will. Three run score. One on the overthrow. A very productive ground ball single by Chris Davis. It really looked like right there is uh, it is Mike an Curtis. eight to five game. Mike Curtis a little late getting getting over there to back Unfortunately that throw Unfortunately so. Shanfeld, Tumosa, and Green all score ahead of the single by Davis who gets two runs batted in on the play and then an overthrow has got to be charged to the right fielder Blandini for allowing the third run to score. And still nobody out in the inning. Pitching right. change by the Silver Knights. Wow, the wheels came off quickly we, here. Uh, in the <laughs> no lead fifth. feels safe, right? So he said it. Yeah. He said it. Unfortunately, true. And ending up on second base on that overthrow and scoring position is Chris Davis. Wow, baseball game inches just like a lot of great sports. Yep. That ball is if it's at the second baseman. That's, Williams that's was talking two. about a double that's play two. and right. only one run right. in. Right, Instead, exactly right. three run score and nobody is out on the play. And uh, it is only a three run game. Here in the fifth inning, this one is far from over. BJ never indicated to, you know, what we're looking for from our starters. If we can get five solid innings, we're in good shape. They get four. Yeah. And so we'll see what that translates into. Right. A lot of baseball still left to be played here, though. We are only in the top of the fifth. And uh, as we have seen, team in the red shirts are knock on wood, but having a pretty good pretty good job at the plate as well putting that ball in play so that's yeah, true you 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 would imagine the Silver Knights are not done scoring either it remains to be seen here yeah and look who's back bringing us some good luck maybe well Curtis made the fatal mistake of losing his control yeah. you know we we mentioned earlier Tom that can't give up a leadoff walk when you're he, up. Eight he was two. working. He was working ahead. He was working ahead of a lot of the a lot of the it batters. Was. First pitch strikes, you know, one and two, and that seemed to help him in terms of where he wanted to locate his ball and and, and the and the def defense behind him was they were making some great plays and you know that that three runs right there could have just as easily been a double play. It's a matter well, of where with, the balls with, hit. With, it's a matter of where the ball hit, but with the runner going that. Shaded Williams he got a late jump to go to his to his left left. John, you played second. Yep. I mean that was a ball that probably he could have had yep. had there not been a runner there. Exactly. You know? Yeah. And you're playing double play formation there and you're given more of a hole than you usually would. Yeah, and yeah. that ball goes through. You do desperately want to knock it down though and try to keep it one run and get one out. You do. Yeah, and but it, he wasn't able to get no. to it. The runner 
also shaded him a little bit, blocked his view a little bit. A little mm -hmm. bit, a little bit of a screenshot. You know, that split second took the ball into the outfield, but Curtis with his lack of control was, was tough. Now there, Taylor Doyle is yeah, in the game is, for the Silver Knights. He's throwing about high 80s. And this and is a tough point now. They were yeah. hoping to get five or six out of Curtis. Right. They're not going to get that. So they're going to have to really make these pitches count. So one, two count now on the batter. Mitch Gwill met the best hitter for the Bristol Blue statistically takes a ball low. Two balls and two strikes. A tough spot. Taylor Doyle coming into the game with nobody out and a man in scoring position here in the fifth inning. You gentlemen enjoy your ballpark food. Thank That's you. Fine as fine as you fill out your <laughs> Oh, menu. sorry. Tom's on a special diet oh. these days. Turkey burgers for me after the Rip to right, and it's going to go foul. foul. Oof. Maybe Doyle a yard it. to the right. He was sitting curve, and he got it. Doyle hung it. Quick bat. Yeah, this Gourmet. Bristol team is good. They can hit. Gomez has hit the ball hard to, twice tonight with nothing to show for it. First, he tried to sk skirt a double down the right field line that Joyce gloved at first base. Then he hit a screaming grounder right at second baseman Williams' second time up. Definitely a pull hitter. Mitch Wilmet, the DH for Bristol, rips it right at Williams again. He gobbles it up, throws the first. That's the first out in the inning, and to third base with less than two out is Davis. At first Don't discount that run at third. That's an right. important run. It yeah, gets a lead too. Yeah, make it a That's two run a game. That's a whole lot of difference. I'm going to come from the other angle and say, don't discount that out. I think that is a huge out just from the mindset. Because we saw what happened Stopped to Bristol when they couldn't get that out. They yeah. couldn't get that out. And and uh, it's not that I want to concede the run, but almost to the point where if you can get your second out, concede the run, you're still up two. Big boppers do up now for Bristol, however. The three, four, five hitters? Four, five, six hitters. Jason four, five, Gonzalez, six, yeah. Mitch Williams, and, of course, Maycock, who has the home run tonight, have a chance to get up in this inning, depending on how... Taylor Doyle does here. One ball and no strikes on Gonzalez, who's grounded out his first two times up. Nice pitch. Yeah, he was nowhere near that 80 mile an hour curveball there from Taylor Doyle. Tell you what, they're going to be tough outs the last four innings after this <laughs> one. They oh, really, yeah. They really are. Doyle, six foot three, 215 pounder from Peterborough, New Hampshire. Plays, pitches his college ball for Plymouth State. Yeah, he was here last year, John. He pitched yeah, in remember the playoffs. The he pitched the Seacoast game that they lost barely. Game one. Did a great job. And then Leary Field strikes for Nashville. <laughs> and they win two. That still makes you smile, that game. Yeah. That was such a, um, I don't know if circus is the right word. Oh, but God. <laughs> two in one pitch. Off speed's going to be fair. Deep down the right field line. Should Long run, and it is... On no. the ground, no. I believe. Did not catch it. Oh, he's got the, the right, the umpire's got his oh, arm he's up. he's got his arm up. out. He's saying out. out. It was a catch. Wow. Okay. A so that great means catch in right he, field he, by tag, Brian he tagged, Dini. Right? He tag? Throw to third right now. Get the I appeal. Play no. to third. Get the appeal on that. Uh, you know what? I'm pretty sure he waited till beyond. Okay, maybe so. Uh, when the ball came down. I'd still try it. Yeah. They have nothing to lose. They, no they must have, uh, you know, no Cam Cook over third. Uh, he, I'm sure he watched. Probably stayed. How about that catch by Blandini? I mean, uh, that was pretty. Well, Blandini's yeah. had a good postseason. He just missed that home yeah. run last inning. Right. Hit the home, home run, run away from the side. cycle. That's a uh, that's a magician name, isn't it? The great Blandini. Oh, the great Blandini. He just robs. They call him Blando. <laughs> Gonzalez of a, a double. Gonzalez, who had was much closer to the play than we were around the yeah. first base. He didn't think he caught it. I didn't think he caught it. You have to ask him after the game. If there's any kind what do you of think he, what do you think he's going to say? <laughs> know. You know what? <laughs> well, he might confide in Tom. King. It looked yeah. as though he recovered to pick it up. Yeah, you know, yeah. Off the ground. Right. So that tells me that that you know maybe he caught it and had, had control of it, it and yeah. something right. Yeah, yeah, maybe it was just the fact that he was stumbling to get back to his feet. The umpire had a pretty good eye. Of course, if this were football, you'd have to catch it, 
and, and then run right. from out there, back in, and go back out again, right. and still have possession yeah. of the ball right. for it to be a for catch. For it to be a catch. Right. right. Yeah. The definition here is maybe a little more clear. We, we got a ball seen, game, everybody. Eight, uh, six. We have, we eight to six. We have seen some spectacular defense in this game and oh, great hitting. Oh, you should have seen Luke Tyrell last night. Foul back. At Pittsfield. He makes a catch high up against the fence. Didn't rob, rob the hitter of a homer, but robbed him of extra bases for the out. Yeah. Okay? Next batter with two outs. Dives to his left, slides across the grass for a catch. Tyree? Tyree, back-to-back -back catches. That's like great. Wow. That would be just That's there. strike three call, backdoor breaking ball. Doyle gets his man. He does allow the one run. That's it's okay. a two-run lead for the Silver Knights going to the bottom of the fifth. Well, now, I'll tell you what. You put the game, you realize what's, what's going on here. And you have to put the game in the hands of your hitters. Because eight runs is not going to be enough. You now know eight runs is not going to be enough to win this game. That's correct. No. You're this going to one, see the big bats a couple This one feels like times. double digits for both teams the way it's going. It could be. Yeah. So, you know, that's Silver Knights have got to, you know, they've got to take advantage of that. I don't know if they've it's the hit. weather or, or the, the talent, uh, uh, you know, with the bats, but they're making this park look small tonight. They are. I mean, it might be the weather. I'm not sure. But also, John, you got to understand something. The arms are dangling. Oh, yeah. 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 They are dangling. Yeah. He's right, so he's the best three. pitcher that this team has and is going finally, in game two, and that's going to be Joe Westerman. You didn't get a chance to see him pitch this year. I did at, at, uh, at Portsmouth. He's, uh, he he's I think he's a Merrimack College kid. He's from Maynard, Mass. He pitched in New York, one of the New York leagues, or some leagues somewhere. I forget where. But he was good. Their league finished, and then he came here. Lot, is that what that's what happens. Is yeah. A lot of leagues finish. This is one of the longest to go Yeah. because they play – Theoretically, 56, 56. You know, games. Yeah. So, and he gave up two pop fly home runs at Leary Field on Sunday. Oh, really? At Leary right. Field? You know, yeah. that would have been fly outs anywhere else. Sure. Didn't let it bother him. Leading Just pitched four, you know, those are the only hits Thomas off him. Joyce. Four over four innings in a seven inning game. He pitched five shutout innings against Worcester last, uh, last week. So he's, he's the best they got, and he's already been named for game two. I bet Doyle might have gotten the start for game three. The BJ never said he was going to wait to hold off the name of starter for a possible game three because he didn't know what he was going to get, you know, how he was going to have to use his bullpen in the first two games. Tom Joyce, the batter, has struck out and walked tonight, leading off in the bottom of the fifth. Ground ball to the shortstop. And it uh, comes up on Gonzalez again. Oh, and ooh, he's safe. E6. That's, that's got to go as an E6. E the throw by Jason Gonzalez pulled Mitch Williams off the base and hustling all the way, Jason Thomas Joyce. Yeah, Mitch putting Williams pressure on the defense. Mitch Williams tried to, you knew he was off because he made the sweep with the glove and couldn't get the tag. So, good way to start. Bottom of the fifth with a runner on first. Nobody out. The offense continues. Austin Young, who homered his last time up. Got to take advantage of a leadoff error. You know, you really do. Yeah. You need to jump on Bristol for every mistake they make in this game because they are going to do the same to you. Young living up to that number 44 that he wears on his uniform tonight with that homer. Checking in on mm. the Almost. Runner, Almost. Kyle Hag. You know, it, you that know, throws I, a little more to the second base side of the bag. That could have been an out. Mark Twain said something about statistics oh. lying to you, but Kyle Hag actually has the worst statistics pitching-wise on, on the Bristol team. If you look down, well, don't as far forget, as ERA and well, batting average Well, don't forget, John, he's coming into an 8-2 game yeah, on the road. Right. So yeah. you're not, you're not the expectations go, are low. You're for, not going to go Bristol. with anybody in your right. upper echelon uh, And part. yet, while he's been in there, Stop the two-run game. Yep. Yep. You know, So anything can happen in baseball. That's why... We play the games and watch mm. the games and strike call, two balls and one strike. Painted on the Austin outside Young. corner there on Young. Yeah. Young has fly to center and Homer to straight away right. Let's see if uh, Joyce does 
Anything on the bases? Grounded into the first base dugout. Yeah, he was trying to homer to straight away, straight away anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's the seven, eight, nine hitters due up here. Nobody out, man aboard for the Silver Knights, leading eight to six. They were ahead. What was it? Eight seven to one and eight to eight two. Eight to two. Yeah. Yeah. Eight to two lead, which you cannot lose that at home in a playoff game. Now yeah, you I'm, said it, Tom. This, this, you got to put. Now you got pressure on this pitcher right now. This Bristol so, team is going to put the ball in play. They're oh, going to put they, the bat no, on the ball. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, I mean, that's why it hurts so much what Curtis did by, you know, plunking the guy and yeah. walking the guy with an eight-two lead that loaded the bases for them. Can't give up cheap ones. Fouled off to the left. Ooh. John, outside, or was that going to catch the corner? I think that was on the upper outer corner. I it was too. a good spoil. Yeah, it was. By Austin Young. I don't think this guy can put the ball in that same spot again. His, he tops out around 81-82. Yeah. So uh, a lot of these batters, they can actually maybe sit see, breaking ball and still catch it. up to the fastball. Yeah. yeah, they could see it. But he is pitching the contact and hoping for the best. Foul uh, up in the air behind home plate. It's going to find the seats. That was a good location fastball hit on a fist. Yeah, it was good a good pitch, pitch to hit. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it was a little inside, I guess. So give yeah, you that. I don't think it that yeah. tied him up. It did, yeah. Tied him up. And now you come breaking ball, and you try for the outside corner, and Young's going to have a decision to make when he sees it. Still three balls and two strikes, and they check in on Oof. the runner. Boy, I'll tell you, Joyce is not, does not have his move down, does he? No, because he doesn't have that big of a lead, and yeah. he's almost getting picked. I know. It. So it, it is strange, but uh, credit uh, Hag with having a good he's quick move one, over there for a right-hander. 3-2. Very fastball. high. Nope. Got him, pop up. Yeah, second baseman. He hadn't been able to handle his fastball the entire time yeah, in the at-bat. I was surprised. I thought he'd go off speed. Mark Tumosa gloves that in short right. That is the first out of the inning. And Luke Tyree, the batter, fielder, has seven, popped to third Tyree. and struck out. Well, I tell you what, you don't answer those four runs. It gives Bristol so much life going into the sixth inning. Opens the door. Eggs pitch off yeah, the see, outside see, that's corner. That's what I thought he was going to try to do to Young. On. Yeah, that, that outside yeah. corner has been expanded yeah. tonight, but not that Get far. Him not three quite and two. that much. I, I don't trust his stuff that he would be able to do that, what he did. That was a great pitch to Young. In fact, to me, that was the pitch of the game. That's a nice hit. That is it nice is hit. over the second baseman's head. And he's going to oh, go for third. Oh, he's going to be a dead duck, I think. Is oh, he came out the bag, and he got him. Yep. Oh, frustration for the Silver Knights. A I terrific throw by Ben Maycock. I wouldn't have sent him. I would have held him at the second base. This guy is not the greatest pitcher in the world. Well, if there's any kind of scouting report on Maycock, they probably would have, somebody would have told you he has got a cannon because he just showed it off. That was a beautiful throw to the third baseman. It was, but the runner beat it. He and did. Slid over the bag. But paid the price. He took he he had such a hard late slide to get there on time. He could yeah. not hold on. Reading the body language of manager BJ Never the third base coach. He's, he knows that that was a huge, huge play. Yes, yeah. it was. Second out of the inning. It's only one runner aboard. It's Tyree at first There's base. Your outside corner. There is again. Blandini doubled his last time up. A ground rule double that fooled a lot of us. Thought it might have been out of here for the third home run for the Silver Knights yeah. tonight. Yeah, it sure did. I thought it was gone. Yeah. It was that time of night where I think uh, the right fielder, Maycock, just he lost sight of it and the first step was in. You know what? I mean, they scored well, two runs in the inning. Blandini ended up scoring. Yeah. But oh, he yeah. should have been on third base. Well, he, well, but the ground it. rule double, he had to go back. Oh, oh, yeah, it was, was ground rule double. Yeah, ground rule double. double. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We weren't sure if he was putting his arms up against the wall because he ran out of real That's estate, but I he, he, he put his arms up because yeah. it was it was, it was out of play, yeah. right? 
Well, where was <clears> it? Oh, bounced, bounced yes. up. A, it, it was warning such track a, and it over. It was such maybe? a high fly ball that came straight down on the on the on, and still had enough to get over the wall in one bounce. I saw the arms go up. I just thought he was pressed against the wall. Right. Exactly. That's see, so there's one. There, there you go. There you go. How He's, important that oh, was. Let's try that again. again. And there's another throw to third. And nice play by Loparco to corral that one. Mm. Oh, my God. Is, uh, is, oh, is BJ watching. upset because he told him to stay at second and he didn't? Because he looks like he's a little disgusted, yeah, like does. walking away. He does. Yes, yeah. I, I thought I was watching an instant replay. <laughs> you almost were. He I'll had tell to... you, two things, though. It was a little bit difficult of a play for uh, Maycock in right. Was. And great job of hanging on to the base for dear yeah. life. <laughs> it was to his left hand Tyree. side. Uh, Tyree had you. If that had yeah. happened the second time, yeah. mm. he was more afraid of his coach than getting. You'd you know, be writing out. about that tomorrow, <laughs> I think. Yeah, well, I'll still be writing about it. If you, if so, end up losing. so Blandini comes through again. See, you put two hits and an error. Yeah. On and the nothing, board. And nothing to show yet. for it. And nothing to show for it. It's Williams tough. With a 1 0 count. And Ted big, Williams. And a big at bat. Williams has scored two runs tonight. He has reached on an error and a single. And he's also lined out to the center fielder. 1-0 pitch. He takes it high. You just, There's I the mean, advantage of being 5-8. The numbers you taught said, I mean, that you have a big advantage against this pitcher, and you've got to use it. You would think so. You know? Opponents batting 325 against Kyle Hag. He has given up 13 hits in nine innings prior to this. The pitch. Oh, line down the left field line. It's two and one. Quick bat by Williams. Just a little too quick. A little bit out in front of that ball. It's interesting. Uh, the way he's hit the ball tonight is all left center. And still almost straight away is uh, Chris field. Davis yeah. in center field. Yep. You'd think he'd take maybe a couple steps toward left center, especially after that last foul. Off the plate. Foul. Strike lunged, two. Lunged at ball three, it looked like. Yep, 11 hits in the game now for the Silver Knights. And we're only in the fifth inning. Of a nine inning contest. These fans are getting their money's worth here of bonus baseball tonight. It's a good crowd, too. There goes the runner. To left field, uh, straight away, right at and it's going to hang up for Logan Green for the third out. Again, Williams hits it well, but again, right at somebody. And the Silver Knights leave two base runners aboard. Thanks to a great throw and maybe a base running blunder, you could call it, by the Silver Knights at third base. It's an 8-6 game. This Nashua still has the lead as we go to the top of the sixth. I think John... I hate to say it, we're going to be talking about that that throw out at third. You know, we might have like four more plays like that we to might. talk about too. The way so we're going, that's the right? only way we won't be talking about it's a good it point. because it's a but it is a key turning point so far in this game. So, as was that three-run ground ball single that the Bristol team had. That was a tough boy, turn of events. Not the way you draw it up. It was eight to two, bases loaded. Nobody out, and a ground ball just barely eluded the dive of second baseman Ted Williams. The right fielder, Blandini, charged it, overthrew the catcher, got away from the pitcher, backing it up. Three runs scored on a ground ball through the right side of the infield and made it a two-run or a three-run game. 8-5, eight, yeah. eight, they added another. That was a Murphy's Law play if ever there was one. Oh, yeah. That could have easily been a double play. Instead, we have a tight ball game, tight playoff game, one of a... Best of three series here at Holman Stadium. We've seen a titanic home run by Ryan Sullivan, his 16th overall on the season. And we go to the top of the sixth. Leading off right fielder number 34, Here's Maycock who homered his last time up. No batting gloves, Ben Maycock. Grip it and rip it. Uh, 
They're going to go with Doyle for a couple of innings if they can. No question about it. They've got to say that bullpen is used a little bit at a time, but last night they used their real ace in the hole, Cam Cruz, for two innings. He's unhittable, John. He really is. Really? Yes. He can't. He. He can't play the field right now because of a bad wrist, so he can't hit, but he can pitch. Mm. And 87 miles an hour past know. Maycock there from Doyle. And they got Murphy. You know, John Drew pitched an inning last night. You have to use your best, though, right, because it's a one game and you're done. Well, Doyle's not their best, I'll tell you that right now. No, Cruz from last but night. But I don't think they can because of the rule on the number of pitches and everything else, you know. So plus two innings. I think he's out. So Doyle is struggling it, with that breaking ball, and able, basically they, they kind of can zero in on the fastball on, on Taylor yeah, here. Yeah, that's the problem with the Taylor. The 2-1. Yep, and they did and fouled it off, and he Just knows. Just a tad late. He knows he missed one. Yeah. All right, 2-2 two, two is the count. Maycock, the right fielder, batting leadoff here for Bristol, has fly to left and homered to right field over both tiers of billboards. Yep. That's just a pitch trying to paint the corner at two and two where you really have to start pitching to contact once you get two strikes on a hitter. Full count. Payoff pitch on the way. The curveball high, stays up. There you go. And that's the, the off-speed stuff that was good but but too high and now you're you're putting people on base. You're giving gifts yeah. to the Bristol Blues, and that's not good. That's Time what run is. at the plate. This would be devastating if they lose this game up 8-2. to two. Lopaco has singled and flied to center. Takes it low for ball one. And they're stirring now in the bullpen, and someone does get up. Maybe it is Cruz. I can't tell. Height-wise, it looks like it could be. You know? It's a tall task to come right back. Well, I mean, push. the rule pitch count rules are such yeah. that I don't, you know, he threw a lot in the second inning that he was in. The first two, inning pitched it was two bang. innings. Two innings. Right, but it's not the innings. It's, it's the, the number, number of pitches. pitches. So how many pitches came? I, I don't know. I think if he goes 30, he's got to have a day. Lopaco swings through the 1-1 one, one pitch. It's one ball and two strikes. See Maycock at first base. I'm going to guess he didn't try to steal all that much. He's got three stolen bases and was caught once, so he will go on occasion. The pitch. Foul Ooh. tipped, and that got That's a big piece of Austin Young. That may have got his hand. You heard, you heard the foul yeah. tip, and then... Something off of that. Not sure where it got him. Did you ever play catcher? Uh, once. <laughs> you did? I think I played it once, too. Yeah. Yeah. Scary place. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I was a shortstop second base guy. Oh, good for you. Yeah. Me, too. Yeah, so that's where all the fun is. Yeah. And, uh, and less of that right there. Right. Well, you know, under the old rules, they did have all these big people trying to take me out at second base <laughs> they waited till 50 years of my life went by before <laughs> they changed out the rules of second they base the rules, yeah. right right the pitcher in the bullpen is uh zach merchant that yeah, cruz uh, i was correct cruz is not eligible there you okay. go there you go so Laparco. see look at now after the mound visit six runs i mean the five uh, injury hits. timeout with two errors and all the free passes right that's those are gifts. Maycock leading off a of first. Nobody out. This top is, of the this sixth. Is, this is where uh, Doyle's got to pitch the contact. And see if we can get a double play out of this. Quick move. Had him. Oh. Joyce. Joyce tried the 360 degree point. tag. Yes. <laughs> Made me dizzy just watching. Yeah. <laughs> Merchant last pitch Sunday he did not look good against. But nobody did in that first game against Seacoast. That Ooh. stays up and in. Yeah, see, that's the problem. Doyle is not getting the ball down. His, his off-speed stuff stays up. Yeah. Now, if it stays up too much, but middle, it's going to get burned. 
Ground ball sharply struck. Cook, nice play to second base. Williams turns it. Ooh, not in time. Great attempt by the Silver Knights. They Great do effort. get one. Yep. Important to get the lead runner out there, though. Sharply hit, but Cook, very good third baseman. Did not play third last night, as we said. He had a pull, had a, got hit in the groin with a ball the other day. Hmm. So... Cook's done a nice job over there tonight, making a couple of nice plays. Yeah, yeah he's very cool uh, under a, uh, a difficult hop there. He, perfect throw to second. Your FCBL batting champion, and as I wrote the other day, there's nothing to not like about Cam Cook. The batter now is Jeff Shanfeld, who walked in, scored, and popped up to the first baseman tonight. Well, they just swing. I mean, they are... I mean, they, they, this is your number eight hitter, and I'm looking right. at him thinking that he's maybe number three, you know? I mean, they're just coming up there confident yeah. Yeah. with that look. They got that hitterish they, look. They do, they yeah. do, you know? Yeah. Do you have that look when you play? I, I like to think so. <laughs> yeah. It depends who's pitching. Yeah. <laughs> I know when he had that look. <laughs> When he got in a fight in Puerto Rico, <laughs> uh -oh. came back with a yeah. shot. Came back with a shiner. I did. You're gonna talk about I that. Told my, I told my wife Good it was story. a bad hop. <laughs> it's just bad hop ground. Yeah, I think the cat's out of that bag, though. I think yeah. she already knows. Look at yeah. the bright side. Could have been worse. She knew right away. She said, you didn't miss any ground balls. <laughs> <laughs> you played on artificial turf in the stadiums. Rip oh, to boy. left, and this could be extra bases as he, he gets to the wall in a hurry. That's going to be a run. Easily. And the lead yeah. runner will be waved home. He fell. He fell down. Throw to third. Cook oh. turns around and just getting yeah. back to port safely was Loparco. But what that does is you got the tie runs on second and third. Now he just had that look, confident wow, look at the Wow, he sure plate. did, Tom. He yeah, came through just, on that, too. That yep. feeling you had. I mean, that was one of the hardest hit balls of the yeah. night, in well, yeah. Tomosa, including the home runs. Tomosa's reached base twice. Merchant. He's the nine hitter, and he's looking hitterish. He's got two pen. singles and two runs scored. Yep. And two runners in scoring position. A single could tie That's this game. That's what I game. said. That's you. you got the tying runs in scoring position. Wow. Up eight to two. And Taylor Doyle in a bit of a tight spot here continues. He hits the upper router with that breaking ball. Big first pitch strike there. This is a nail biter. And we're in the Dog fifth. Fight. We're in the fifth inning. Six, we're in the six fifth innings. Six. The top of the sixth. The only thing blinded by all the numbers up there. More exciting is if it was the decisive game of the series. That's hit hard to left, caught. and it's going to sink oh, in no. for a hit. And Maduri gets it in a third, but a run will score. Played that like you thought he might catch it. He did. And I don't know if he was trying to decoy yeah, or not. Potentially, potentially. You know? I know. I was just saying that he just had so much talk. This is 8-9. 8-9. Double single. Oh, yeah. You know, 8-9. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Those 8-9 hitters were hitting like they were angry that they were batting 8-9. <laughs> I mean, they probably have never batted 8-9 in uh, their young lives. That's it for Doyle. He just could not get the big out when he needed it. No. RBI single for Tomosa makes it a one-run game. You know, walks the leadoff hitter, and that starts the whole thing. So now Merchant comes in. BJ loves Merchant, Merchant's ability. I don't like his numbers, but I believe this is Merchant. But here again, you get the tying run at third base with one out, so a fly ball is going to put... He's got a tied. limited sample, Tom. I see what you mean about yeah. the numbers, the ERA 27. But he's a, <laughs> yeah, well, that's he's a, two innings, though, two inning sample. Right, no, yeah. no. But see, Westerman came in with him, and Westerman had two got wins. an ERA of one eight, yeah. you know, and, and those are two pop flies. Or he really should have pitched four shutout. Is he the projected he starter game two? He is the starter. The starter game, game two. two. Already named. Yep. Eight to seven ball game, and we have a pitching change. Merchant threw that ball so hard that uh, Young actually didn't get the catcher's mitt up in time. So an adrenalized relief appearance here by Zach Merchant. Do you have any notes on him, or is it? Uh, no, nothing no, on okay, the bullpen yeah. stuff. Okay. Nothing on bullpen stuff. Sure. 
Merchant pitched, uh, if I'm not mistaken, he pitched in the Hamptons. On Long Island? Yep. We're back to the top of the order for Bristol. One of these guys, Westerman or Merchant, I can't, yeah, I can't Merchant, remember which. Merchant looks like uh, out of uh, Southern New Hampshire University. Yeah, he, right? he pitched uh, one, one of the two pitched in Syracuse, and the other one pitched in the Hamptons. Okay. In terms of not Syracuse, oh, in terms college, of, right. Syracuse for a college league. Gotcha. Well, I'm sure a lot of arms are hanging, but it looks like Zach Merchant, not one of them. He's got pretty much of a live arm as he takes his warm-up tosses. Hasn't pitched that much since he got here. Yeah, so right. That could be a, gra a saving grace for the Silver Knights to have Zach Merchant in reserve. And again, he could have been a, a game three starter. You know, it's, it's yeah. A lot of these pitchers are being used in situations where BJ never probably didn't want to have to use them in an eight to two game. Top of the sixth. One run ball game. The potential tying and go ahead runs are on base for Bristol. Their lead off batter in the order is up there. Logan Green has been hit by a pitch, rounded out and flied out. Time is called. Ball was loose. 0 oh and 1 is the count on Green, the left fielder for Bristol, has a chance to tie this thing up even with a sack fly. Silver Knights setting up on defense at double play depth in the middle, and the infield's deep all around. Check swing, call the strike though on the outside corner. Young, oh and two. Young has got to be able to block pitches, but he's also got to be able to know where they Find are when him. he blocks them. Yeah. He lost one tonight. He lost one the other night against Brockton. Trying to get on the same page here. Merchant throwing in the high 80s as he enters the game. Yeah, this is uh, a situation where he may have been fooled about he the pitch. Like yeah, he was absolutely. crossed up. Yeah. Get their signs straight. Let's see if they might send Tumosa down a second. Maybe they'll wait until they see how Green fares with the one out. Chance to drive home the run from third. Ground there ball through the right side. Tie game. Tied up 8-8. Eight to eight. A game the Silver Knights led at 1.8-2 is all knotted up here in the sixth. Go ahead, run now on second. Only one down here. Exactly as I thought. You know? Protecting the plate with two strikes. Logan Green open comes the, up with the big hit. Open the door for these hitters, and they're going to take advantage of it. And that door has been wide open for two straight innings. Now Chris Davis batting for the fourth time tonight, the two hitter for Bristol. One for three with a ground out, a line out, and a single. You think you think as well, Tom, it, it's a situation where you have to play that play in game, so you have to use your arms, whereas Oh, there's no question know, that, about that it. It makes you, a huge, huge it, difference. Well it, it, it does. I mean they have an advantage where you know they, they have their arms rested and you don't. That's right. why that play in game is something you really want to avoid. Topped foul. Last year it didn't hurt two. them. This year it, it, it you know right now it is. I mean, but it all starts with Curtis. Curtis needed to throw strikes and right. he wasn't he just didn't have it after the fourth uh, you know in, into the you know into the fourth. Yeah, after four innings he just didn't have it and that's unfortunate. This is going to be foul and is it playable? No, it's still going to elude the Silver Knights third baseman and left fielders. So goes as still 0 and 2 count here on Chris Davis. Really a tale of two baseball games here. <laughs> two, <laughs> really, you know? Yeah. The 0 2 pitch. Got Swung it. on and missed strike three. Well done. Now the fun begins. Three, four, five. Oh, yeah. Will That's Matt. a huge strikeout. I don't know. Sometimes I just think that that might postpone the inevitable the way things go <laughs> with this pitching set. 
So Guilmet was up. Last in night the, that wasn't the case, but you went with your A team last night. This guy was up in the uh, top of the batting race too, Tom, at 374. Boy, this is a good crowd for a, yeah, it is. for a one night notice. I think the word has gotten out. We're live on Nashville TV, by the way. So if you're watching the game on Wednesday, August 9, you got a good hour and a half, two hours of baseball left in this one. <laughs> you want to come on down and enjoy a great game to this point. Anybody's ball game, obviously, eight to eight. Game one of a best of three series, possibly the Silver Knights' last home game of the season. We hope not. And Merchant mm. firing fastballs. That's 84. Gets by Mitch Guilmet, who has grounded out three times tonight, hit the ball sharply all three times. Guys, Bristol has not been shut out in an inning since the second. The 1-1. One, one. Biggs cut there. That one would have went a long way. Will Matt didn't get cheated, but it's 1-2. 87, 87 there on the gun. Wow. That was now, BJ tells you, BJ loves this guy's talent and ability to throw. He wishes he had both Merchant and Westerman from the start of the season. The 1-2. That ooh, just ooh. missed oh boy. Got hitting away. the batter. It got away ball. from him. Boy, that would have loaded the base. The one thing you don't want to do. Oh, the one thing you just don't want to do here. Two and two. Good reflex there by Gomet to avoid getting hit by that. The 2-2 two -two pitch is on the way. Oh, yeah, yes, he did. the inside corner. Wow. It was the same pitch that almost hit him. That one caught the inside corner. Pulled the instead. string. He pulled the string on that one. Is right. So credit Merchant for going back to the breaking ball and not being afraid to throw it inside again. And we go to the bottom of the sixth in an 8-8 eight to eight game. New baseball game right now. Completely new game. Oh. How you feeling? I'm <laughs> tired. Exhausted. Tired right now. I feel, like, <laughs> I feel like we already played a game. Serious. Wow. Although we got off easy the last time we were here. We, we worked an inning plus. That's right, true. So yeah, the, uh, lightning shortened We're game. making up for it tonight. We're and getting certainly. all the offense yeah. that we can handle. Yeah. Both teams giving it their all, giving it their best. Now, Tom just left the uh, announcer's booth here. I'm wondering if he's heading down to that little conga dancing line there to join in the festivities. I'm not. He is stopping short of that at a keyboard okay. to our right. Oh, okay. But that's a great idea. I See didn't know. I, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I think that was Mississippi State that started that. That's cool, huh? Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's great how they get the players involved, too, but you wonder at some point, are they saying, okay, we're going to play a baseball game, game here, yeah. you know? I'm but, having enough excitement. Right. Yeah, between the lines. But. It's been informed our innings on our screen not working correctly, but everything else is. What do we have for an inning up there? It says the fifth, but it's actually right. the sixth. Okay, so... We're actually in the sixth inning, and it's the bottom of, and it's an eight to eight game. Cam Cook leading off here. Yes, the Silver Knights leading hitter this season, Cam Cook, batting in the two spot, leading it off in the sixth. Takes a strike. Came with an off speed right there. Kyle Hag, the relief pitcher for Bristol, has been doing a fine job since entering the game. He and sure has. Gets a quick 0-2 count on Cook. 19 hits in the game. Silver Knights have 11 of them. Both teams have made a pair of errors that have factored in the score. Swung on mm. and missed, strike wow. three. A three-pitch strikeout of Cam Cook, something that we did not see almost ever this season. Before. Hag's new nickname can be called the tourniquet because he has stopped the bleeding for sure. True. Bonnecke has had a terrific mm. night. Double, a single double, triple. Nice time to hit for the cycle. <laughs> That's right. And a first pitch swings and pops it toward the stands. That's out. One of the pitchers just tried to catch a 80, 90 mile an hour pop up on the way down with his pitching Hopefully hand. Hopefully it wasn't his pitching hand, right? <laughs> 
And I think it was. He just threw it up a little bit of, with that yeah. same hand. There you go. <laughs> uh, I, I, I saw a wedding ring get ripped off the finger of a guy at Tropicana Field by a Ted McGriff pop-up. No kidding. Up. When he was Fred? playing for the, he was playing first base for the uh, Tampa Bay Devil Rays. There were Devil Rays way Fred back McGriff. then. Fred McGriff. Fred McGriff. Yeah, there you go. Did I said Ted. Ted McGriff. I said yeah. Fred McGriff. Fred yeah. McGriff, the and crime it, dog. It, it took the, <laughs> it took the wedding ring right out the guy's hand. He's like in the, in the um, field boxes. Hit the center. Ah. Uh, it's gonna hang up there. Like and it jammed Chris him inside Davis a little bit. Catch. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Bonnicky flies out. That's the first time he's made an out tonight. Two up, two down for the Silver Knights here in the sixth inning. Yeah, the guy tried to catch the pop up. It took the wedding ring off his finger, it cut his finger. Yeah. And then he had he spent like ten minutes looking for the ring. It actually had rolled down underneath the seats. Like oh no kidding. Six rows. Imagine going home with that story. I know. No, honestly, yeah. that's where it is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He didn't get the ball. He didn't get the ball. No, oh he didn't man. Get the ball. The kid in the first row got the ball. He rolled down to him. Oh. It was like nobody there. It was a raise against the uh, White Sox. One of the things we're seeing here is uh, things start to shift a little bit is baseball's not finding the hole like it was earlier. You notice that? Not finding, yeah. It's finding, you know, the opposition. Defensive players. Yeah. Yep. So. You know where there's nobody playing? On the other side of the fence. And don't rule out another home run <laughs> in this game. We've seen a bunch of them already. Strike called on the outside corner. 82 on the gun there from Kyle Haig. Maduri didn't look like he was too happy no, with that. That was the um, outside corner getting stretched again in favor of the pitcher. The 1-2. Mm. Golfed toward left center. Not that deep. Long run. going to get down for a hit. Two out single for Anthony Maduri who finds a way to hit him where they ain't. Yeah, just as we said that, he ends up dropping one in. Yeah. So should keep talking about it. And it's always great to get an extra at bat in an inning when you have this guy at the plate with a runner aboard and two outs. It's Ryan Sullivan who has had a tremendous three run home run, one for three tonight. Be nice to see him get another one right here. He was swinging for it and it goes just foul. Again, a little bit of funny English on that ball as yeah. it spins into foul territory. Thought they for a second it that, might hug the line. They yeah. were hoping it would so they could throw them out. It was out. like the California goal rush down there between the catcher <laughs> and the right. pitcher. But they came up empty. 0-1 is the count on Sullivan. DHing tonight. It's Tom Joyce playing first. There goes the runner. It's a strike called. A one hopper to second. He's in there. And, and the umpire was holding on because it looked like he was going to call him out at first. Wanted to see how the play ended. And first glimpse here. It looks like we may have a little hitch in the giddy up. Thank you. His right. knee is. It was a hard slide on the uh, right knee. And Maduri might be shaken up a little, but. He's off the base. He's taking a lead. No timeouts called. He did a. It was tough just to stay yeah. on the base, too. That was another thing. He almost came off like we've seen some base runners do tonight. Ground ball to shortstop on three skip hops. Nice a play. Low nice throw. Move. Yeah. Dug out. Yeah, he's. For the third out of the inning, Gonzalez to Williams for the final out. So the Silver Knights do not score, and we go to the top of the seventh, tied eight to eight. Let's keep our eye on Maduri a little bit. Yeah, good Looks point. Like he's, he's playing left field tonight. Looks to be okay. So, deep breath. Top seventh seven. inning. Three, seven, yeah. eight, nine. With we're two thirds of the way through this one. And you can't sleep on those guys. No. 
I have to say, if you're going to award momentum to one side or the other, what do you think? Well, I mean, I'd rather have momentum late than early, I suppose. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, it's a, you know, I guess it, what you're saying. Right well, now? I think Bristol, obviously. I think you're uh, right. They're, they're getting out of the innings. They're, you know. Coming they're, from they're, behind. They're giving up a couple of you know, little hits here and there, but nothing major. And they're, and, they're, and they're putting the ball in play. And they're putting some hurt on the ball, really, is, yeah. is what it looks like. And, um, and they got their middle of the order coming up here. These batters' ears are pinned back, and it just looks like they're they're uh, they have bad intentions. <laughs> yeah. Jason Gonzalez, Mitch Williams, and Ben Maycock do up here for Bristol in the top of the seventh inning in an eight to eight game to face reliever Zach Merchant for the Silver Knights. You really need something here from Merchant. Yeah, you got to bridge you. Gotta, best performance of the season. Got to get you to the. First pitch misses outside. One ball and no strikes. Got to get you to the eighth with no damage here. It's the best ticket in town tonight, folks, here on Nashry TV and at Holman Stadium. The Silver Knights in their home playoff opener. That's in for a hit. Line drive gets down into the right center field gap. Cut off and nice play by Blandini to hold Gonzalez to a single. That's Definitely affordable family entertainment, and uh, yeah. there's a lot of entertainment taking place out here tonight. Sure is. In both teams. If you came here looking for a pitcher's duel, you came to the wrong place. Crowd has continued to fill out tonight, and it's uh, pretty nice to see, especially the, the games living up to its potential. It's playoff baseball, John. It's definitely something that, um, you know, it's a treat. I mean, it's it's yep. a best of three series, and you got to get that first win. Now, Mitch Williams. Good pitch, 85 on the gun there. Swings through at strike one. He is up for the fourth time tonight. He has walked, lined out to left, and got caught looking. Facing Merchant. To left. That could drop. Near That's the line. trouble. That's trouble. Nope. Just foul. Mm. That was big trouble. If it got down. Could have been first and third. Barring a great throw from Maduri to Cook at third base. Maybe to cut down the lead runner. It would be nice to return the favor in that matter. As the um, Bristol was able to gun down. Mm. A Silver Knights player, right fielder throwing him out at and third. And that was a run because it was a yeah. hit the very next at bat. It was, yeah. Yeah, that would have been a run. So Potentially still have the lead if that was And one more space. out. And another out. You never know. It could have been even a bigger inning. Fisted. Ooh. And Second easy baseman. catch yep. for Ted Williams. Williams makes the call mm. on his side of the bag. So Mitch Williams retired for the third time tonight. A twin killing here right now would be pretty good. Especially because it would be Ben Maycock that would be hitting right. into the double play. Right. He of the mammoth home run. Mm -hmm. He's also walked and flied out to left. There's some pop in this bat. He's got that Derek Jeter thing where he holds up his hand toward the umpire to, to ask for perpetual timeout to get ready. For the next offering, now they're going to reset. First base coach for Bristol, right in the, the line where he's supposed to be. Third base coach, as they usually are, off on their own. <laughs> High pop up toward the line, long run for everybody, playable, caught. Ooh. Midori makes the grab. He might have been right on the chalk. Midori made a great grab. I tell you what, he actually overplayed it by about a step. Had to reach back. He did behind him to make that play, and that thing may have fallen fair. So that's it a might great have. defensive play. Yeah. That, that's a difficult play out there. You know what would have been even more difficult if it went off his glove and then fell, and they would have to decide whether, right. where he was and right. where the ball right. was, and that would right. have been a tough call. Glad the ump I'm sure the umpires are glad he caught it. For that reason. That's a big out right there. Second out of the inning. And, and it guts uh, the dangerous uh, Maycock out. 
And here is Alex Loparco who has singled and reached on a fielder's choice. We're just over two Line hours out. into this game and we still have no idea. Who's going to win? <laughs> That's right. Worcester is playing against Brockton in the other semifinal playoff series that's underway in Worcester tonight. Bravehearts were leading Brockton 3-0 early, but it's like this game. Who knows what the score is right. now. Lopako, the seventh batter in the order, mm. fouls it off his own chin guard and knocks it loose. That's his elbow guard that came off. I think he fouled it off somebody's foot. One and one is the count. You didn't have any of that kind of equipment no, when I you didn't. played, did you? I didn't know. John, no. Yeah. Wrist guards and shin guards and there's a few days where I wished I did. Yeah, no question. <laughs> <laughs> He's readjusting that now. Third baseman for Western New England and for these Bristol Blues. The one one pitch is on the way. Kyle Merch with the runner goes. Ground ball left side. Cook oh, has a ricochet off bounce. of him. And it's going to be, they're, they're going to wave no, him? They're going to hold him. Stop him. Boy, yeah. he, was, he was waving him. Wanted to see how the left fielder played it. react. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, un uncharacteristic miss there yeah. by Cam Cook at third base. That was a tough hop for Cam. It we was tough. To see how they scored. Huge it. overspin on it. They're going to give it a hit or an error. And the Silver Knights had two errors prior to right, that. Right, so as of now, it looks like they're playing that as a hit. It, oh, there well, goes the, there goes the error. error. Yep. E5, Spoke so first soon. and third, two outs. And here is the dangerous bottom of the order, as in the 8-9 hitters. <sighs> we Jeff talked about Shanfeld. having to get out of this inning unscathed. Yeah. This is, this is. He doubled sharply his last time up to left center. And that one's in the dirt. Slow breaking there. ball there from Merchant. Yeah, pretty important play right there by the catcher, um, Young. Yes. That ball gets by. Now you're losing by a run. Shanfeld, the catcher for Lehigh University, takes a ball high. First and third for the Blues. So 2-0 and oh right now. You really don't, you're not sure how you want to complete this at bat. Do you want to give him something he can drive or are you content to kind of stay out of the strike zone a little bit? Because loading the bases really doesn't hurt you. Yeah. You know what I mean? From the standpoint of you, you can still get the third out and not really concede yeah. anything. You know the crazy thing is, though? I mean, of all games I've seen, this is the one game where you do not want to face the number nine The number hitter. nine hitter. Good point. Mark yeah, Tumosa that's a good point. is three for three with a party so, tonight. He's so on there deck. there you go. That's something you don't usually have to consider. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Does he have the green light here on 3-0? If he did, we'll never know never because know. he missed way mm. outside with ball four. And that does load the bases for second baseman Mark Tumosa from UMass Lowell who's playing just about in his backyard here at Holman Stadium in Nashua. He has singled and scored, singled and scored, and he singled home uh, a run in the sixth inning. So not the guy you want to be facing in this situation. Strike. And he starts ahead. Good first pitch strike. The mysteries of baseball. You're in the on-deck circle. You see the guy ahead of you, four-pitch walk. And then you get up, and the guy paints. Strike one. 0-1 on Tomosa. Well, you're taking all the way there. Make him throw a strike. Right. Zach Merchant's pitch is far outside. Mm. Ball one. Base is loaded. Two outs in an 8-8 playoff game here at Holman Stadium. Best of three series. Starting here with game one tonight. The pitch misses up. Two balls and one strike. That registered at 86 on the radar gun from Zach Merchant. The crowd interested, invested, but on edge here. On Steve. edge is probably the way yeah. I would put it. 
Big Ooh. swing and a miss. That may or may yeah. not have been a strike. <laughs> Looked like low and away. Two and two. Tomosa was all geared up for a fastball that he could drive. I don't think he quite got his pitch. The location worked in the pitcher's for the pitcher's benefit on that one. Here we go. Pitch of the game right here, John. The 2-2. Two -two. Ball. Three. Oh, he rung him he up. Rung him up. <laughs> wow. Of course, we don't have the best angle from up here, but we're comparing other pitches earlier. Kind of looked a little low. Termosa can't believe it. <laughs> He's still standing in front yeah. of the whole plate. Strike three called, and mm. the Blues leave the bases loaded. We go to the seventh inning stretch at Holman. It is a, still an 8-8 eight, eight game. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> You know, usually you look at the lineups, John, and you think, how many more times are we going to see the three, four, five hitters? Well, in this case, you're worried about how many times am I going to see the seven, eight, nine hitters, right? Because they are just they are just putting the ball in play. That pitch right there, and Tom King joining us again. At Borderline. Ooh. Borderline. Yeah. But see, Merchant has that respect from the umpire because yeah. his stuff is good. Right. And he's shown, and he's shown his stuff is good. He's shown aggressiveness. So when you're trying to, John, you know this. When you're trying to paint, and you're trying to nibble, and then the umpire sometimes doesn't go for it. Merchant goes right at these guys, you know. And I think the umpire respects that. So when that pitch was close, gave him the benefit of the doubt. Now the question is, as you guys chew away, <laughs> can Nashua, yeah. after finally putting up a goose egg against yeah. his team, in the, you know, in, in the top of the inning, can they you know ride that momentum? You know, they had their best hitter RBI guy up there with a chance to take the lead. He wasn't able to do it. You know, bottom of the order isn't that strong, although it's been okay tonight. But I mean, can they, you know, bounce back? While while you know, I told you, the bats are the ones that are going to have to bail out the pitching staff in this game. And right now they haven't done that. You know, they stopped at eight. Yeah. You know, and that's not what you want to see. We've got a little quiet here late in their game. Late in the game, that's been silenced by this uh, unlikely hero on the mound so far for Bristol. Just like you were silenced by the, the uh, volume control by, uh, by Tim. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle Hag, actually my- He has that power. My microphone was off to the side there. Big cut first pitch swinging was leadoff hitter for the Silver Knights, Thomas Joyce. Walk struck out, reached on an error by the shortstop. This is still Kyle Hag. Hag, and see that's big because Bristol uses up a pitcher that they weren't counting on. Yeah, you know, and he's and giving them some quality he's innings. Giving him, so he's pitched, he's wiggle out of trouble. Paints there, yeah, one and two. Gets the corners here yep. and there. You know, and that all of a sudden, boy, that, that just, just puts everything over to that <laughs> side. It really does. Yeah. You know, it just, you, know you talk about uh, bonus baseball. That's, the, <laughs> that's true for the pitcher right now for Bristol. He comes to the game tonight thinking, well, game one of the best three, I'm probably not going to get in. And then circumstances play out. He's out there. He had no pregame jitters, probably. No. It's all, but you knew all hands on deck yeah. and nothing to lose. And right. And Kyle Hag has done a great job. Sure has. So worst case scenario, you, you yeah. have two home games on the horizon. So. Mm. Foul straight back to the net. Two and two is the count. Home runs in this game by Kyle Sullivan, Ryan Sullivan and Austin Young for the Silver Knights. And Maycock for Bristol. Big swing and a foul tip back to the screen. 
Also a ground rule double for Tom Blandini and a couple of uh, deep shot. Bonnecke, straight away center. And a double. Yeah. Yep. Both knocking triple and runs. Double. But they in recent innings, the offense dying down a little yeah, bit. They're hitting, it, they're hitting it at people. It sets things up for that bullpen of Bristol's to come in with the big guns in the eighth and ninth. 2-2 two, two pitch. Mm. Topped foul. I tell you, you got a lefty up there against a pitcher who isn't really that fast, but he throws you off enough. Yeah, put the ace lefty back on the mound. <laughs> Boy. Yeah. I missed that. That wasn't Pope, by the way. Pope pitched the night before in yeah. Pittsfield. They left that in the we, score sheet. Oh, so yeah. that we, fooled some people. Yeah. There's the lucky fan. Heads up. Yeah. There we go. That's the thing is it hits up there and it bounces, bounces right back. back. Down. you got to really look for it. Yeah, we. Remember that night Mary Goyette took one? Austin the Pope the was the starter last right, night for right. Pittsfield. And you know what? When they had to take him out, changed the game. The 2-2. Two -two. Strike three oh caught him on the corner. The upper outer corner. Yeah, I just I don't think that was there. I disagree. I, I, I think it was right was. there. I saw uh, uh, there was a um, the Cleveland Indians against the uh, Colorado Rockies day baseball today. And uh, the starter who threw a great game for Cleveland, he struck out a batter on that. And the, the pitch zone tracker showed it right up in the upper outer corner. The um, a batter didn't like it. He hated it, but it's a great pitch for strike three in that game. I can't remember that. It's a, it's a baby faced righty they have there, a starting pitcher for Cleveland. I can't remember his name. Oh, but the nerd? <laughs> the Cleveland Indians? Yeah. The kid who uh, last year was like into. Yeah, what's his name? I, I forget his name. Oh, I just yeah. got on the radio show. Today I just called you're him talking? The nerd, the nerd yeah. 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 Last night it was, was it Kluber last night? Kluber's good. He's real good. Yeah, it was the other one. They had a couple of aces on that team. Maybe maybe two or three. The 0-1 pitch to Austin Young. Very high to right center, but playable. Bristol outfielders talk to each other, and Chris Davis ends up making the catch as he calls off Maycock. Two up, two down in the Silver Knights' seventh in an 8-8 contest. The next run all important, but you need base runners. Luke Tyree trying to get on with two outs. Not to look too far ahead, but we did find out that they do not do the home run tiebreaker. No, I, oh, I know that. Oh, yeah. No, not in the playoffs. No, God, no, please. It's like hockey. They don't do it in hockey. Yeah, they don't shootout. do the shootout. Next year, they've got to get rid of that. Just go get rid of the point system and go uh, with the extra inning games with the runners at the first and second or whatever. I assume that'll be at the top of the docket for the offseason meetings. It'll be discussed whether or not they take our advice or not. I don't know. You know, I mean, they had to switch with two weeks left. They realized that everybody wasn't playing the same amount of games and they had to go to <laughs> point percentage. You know, that's just a, it's, it's tough. You know, you change horses in midstream like that. It's the 0-2 to Tyrone. Oh, oh, just, just, it. just missed it. Missed it. it. Yep. Broke his bat. So Luke Tyree gets another bat, the Marymount University center fielder. 0-2, swinging, protecting the plate. Looked like Kyle Hag was not wasting a pitch there, coming right after him with two outs and nobody on in a tie game. Mm. Line there drive, and it is it fair down the left field line. Extra bases here. Hit the He's chain got link. Speed. You'll have to stop there, though. Wow, he flies. Tyree is at second base easily standing with a double going the other way on 0-2. And, and Haig might have tried to be too straightforward there with mm. two strikes on the batter. Yeah, big two-out double. That's a great point, John. You wonder if maybe you don't give him something to hit. Easy to second guess from up it here. It is, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. If he paints in the outside corner, he swings through. He's like, of course. Yeah. Going after him, 0-2. No waste anything. Right. And a, and a mound visit for Bristol. That is the potential go-ahead run there at second base here in the seventh inning. But there are two out. And Tom Blandini is due up. Blandini's two for three with a double. 
carrying on the new tradition of this playoff game where the eight and nine hitters doing all the damage. Right. No bigger a moment than right now for Blandini. Yeah. Yeah, the eight and nine hitters for the Silver Knights have four hits, including two extra base hits. And the eight nine hitters for Bristol have they've reached base safely five times. A walk, double, and three singles, and three runs scored. So everybody participating in the offense for both teams. You never know where it's going to come from. I have to say, though, in terms of rip foul. Oh, boy, in terms of excitement, <laughs> what would you rather see? Would you rather see a pitcher's duel, or would you rather see something like this? I love the slugfest. Yeah. <laughs> I think From a writer's standpoint, I'd rather oh, see the eight yeah, two lead hold up. I'd like to see Chris Sale like go out there. Have an easy night. Or, or better yet, Greg Maddox. and just Remember, uh, coach. Hour and a half. I got gotcha. you. Doesn't matter whether you win or lose. It's how long it takes you to play gotcha. the game. That's the sports writer's creed. Right there. The sports writer's creed. Yeah. <laughs> And that's Oof. foul. He's getting closer to a fair ball. Yeah, but it's he is. Two but you strikes. know what's going to happen is they're going to—he's going to either bust him up inside, or he's going to try to paint the outside. And, and he's going to poke it down the left field line for a double. Let's see. <laughs> Blaine, Blaine, do you get the go-ahead. Yeah. yeah, we'll see what hit happens. Two nights in a row. Oh yeah. He hit a, a foul ball out there with his name on it too. He had a towering ground rule double, folks. It was almost his second home run of the summer in back-to-back -back nights. For Tom Blandini. Now he's facing an 0-2 count. The potential go-ahead run at second. And it's a swing and bunt. Wow. Shanfeld out of the blocks quickly, and he throws him out. Good, Good play, play by, by the Shanfeld. Bristol. Great gotcha. play. Yep. Wow. That is the third out of the inning, and we go to the top of the eighth. Still tied 8-8 eight to eight here at Holman. Now Tom King brings up that interesting point. What do the bullpens look like moving forward from Theirs here? Are mm. much, they're yeah. much better right now because of all the pitchers used. Can you in the in the FCBL, can you just call somebody tonight and put no, them in uniform rosters tomorrow? Are rosters are frozen as of frozen August. Frozen for like the playoffs. Months. I think August 1st. Oh, that's they freeze them. Okay, that's been like 10 so days. So what PJ now. did was he yeah. made the agreements with the two pitchers to come in and put them on the roster, but they didn't show up until a few days later. Okay. Oh, yeah. No, he did it last year, too, with a couple of pitches, and it paid off. Now on the hill for your Silver Knights from Bryant University, number four, Justin Snyder. So we get a look at it. yet another relief pitcher for the Nashua Silver Knights. Justin Snyder. Justin entering the game has a big sample this season. He's appeared in 16 games, thrown just about 22 innings, giving up 17 hits. He has struck out 22 batters against 21 walks. Oof. So the ratio not what he would like. No, Snyder is hit or miss. ERA of 3.74. Rehabbing an injury. Shoulder. I'll tell you what, opponent's batting average, only 213, yeah, but the walk's the problem, right? right. No, control? Definitely control. Yeah. And in this game, that's the theme. Yeah, in a tie game, playoffs, yes. That's the thing. So Bristol will send their top of the order to the plate here in the eighth inning. Logan Green, Chris Davis, and Mitch Guilmette do up. And I hate to say this, but Guilmette entering the game, batting 374, hitless, 0 for 4. Talk about do. He's due. You yeah. want to get him up there with nobody on base, hopefully, but Logan Green and Chris Davis, the one-two hitters, will have something to say about that. Justin Snyder, a left-hander who sets up on the third base side of the rubber and throws it low for ball one. Green has 
grounded out, single, been hit by a pitch, and flied out. Little of everything. Swings through that changeup, it looked like, at 81. One ball and one strike. Green, the left fielder for Bristol. Takes it high. Logan batted 241 during the regular season. He did have a homer and a triple and four doubles among his 28 hits. Cues that one to the on deck circle. So two balls and two strikes. Big pitch here. Yeah, to the leadoff batter in the eighth inning. Snyder kicks and throws. Mm, Foul tip. Piece. Young's got a whole lot of that. He knows it too, look on his face. Yeah, no rebounds. Just <laughs> secure that. No rebounds. Marty Brodeur, <laughs> deflection, catch it. Catch it and go Easy for the, said than done. Catch it and go for the face off. Yeah. Toughest position in the game. Yeah. The 2 2. Oh. Oh. Tried stayed to up. frame it. Young tried to bring it down. It stayed up. I'd like to see that one on the. Yeah, but see, you know what? I just, I just think, you know what? Pitch to contact here. Okay. You know, I, yeah. I, I just don't, don't get fancy. Pitch to contact. Hit uh -oh. hard and deep to left. This Your has a chance. Came true. It is carrying. Yes, it Bristol has their first lead of the night oh on a home my. run pitch. by Logan Green. A 3-2 pitch that he drove over the left field wall. Not sure that's quite what you meant, Tom. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, boy. The fourth home run of this ball game gives Bristol its first lead of the night. 9-8 here in the eighth inning. Wow. Down 8-2 on the road. And you can you can see the the body language of the Silver Knights right now. They're kind of looking around, kicking some dirt. They got to stay in this. At gotta one stay point, positive. Nashville led eight to two. Bristol comes all the way back with seven unanswered runs. Oh. Oh. Not the way you drew it up. Chris Davis, the batter, has singled, lined out. Grounded out, struck out. He's one for four. This is his fifth time up tonight. Nowhere near that breaking ball. 0-2. Oh well, looked like he was sitting dead red, right? Yeah. <laughs> Trying to pull it, yank yep. it. Nothing there. No, I mean the home run. Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, the batter. Yeah, count. Logan yeah. Green. No doubt about it. Cues this one. It's going to be a long That's run for drop, everybody. Drop. Base hit. Yeah. And those are the hits that, that the Silver Knights were getting early in the game. That's true. The script has flipped. And Bristol getting the breaks with the bats and making their own breaks, too. You see that really a no-doubter home run by Logan Green on the 3-2 fastball. Oh, yeah, no, as soon as yeah. he hit it, it was gone. He you know, you're that. right, too. You know, when you were talking about pitch to contact when he didn't get the call on the breaking ball, That's just like it. everybody in the ballpark knew what was coming next, right? Right, exactly. A fastball in the zone, mm. and Green did not miss it. You just need to get ahead of the hitters. The <laughs> Snyder doesn't do that, and it always comes back to haunt him. Here's Met, dangerous hitter with a 1-0 count. Strike called, and that was generous. One and one. Justin Snyder from the stretch. The runner goes. Strike called. One hopper to second, not in time. Yeah. Stolen base for Chris Davis. Off speed pitch, good yeah. jump. Surprised the play was as close as it was. Kind of looked like a backup slider that Snyder threw there. He got the call in the inside corner as Wilmet took it for strike two. Timeout by Austin Young wants to talk to his pitcher. 
first base is empty. Of course, the job now for Justin Snyder is to hold the game right where it is at 9-8, to eight, not allow any insurance runs here for Bristol. There is a pitcher warming for the Silver Knights. I don't see any activity down in the... I think they're going with um, Kyle Haig, Haig for yeah. the duration here. Why not? Yeah, I think there is somebody. Is there? Somebody. Is, uh, a lot of zeros. They're playing uh, catcher to just watching the game from underneath the uh, Quiznos sign. Three innings of shutout ball. So I think they are just watching the game down there. Maybe seeing if they need to warm up. Swung mm. on and missed. Waving at that one was Gomez, who's not had a good night. 0 for 5. Yeah, that was a gift for the Silver Knights. That was well out of the strike zone. Yep. That's what happens when you're 0 for. 0 for 4. Yep. You're starting to reach. Yep. What that one hit. Here's Jason Gonzalez, one for four. Singled his last time up. Now Sullivan's job is very simple, or Snyder's job. Snyder's job is very simple. Keep this to a one-run game because you got the guns coming up next inning. Yeah. You know, you got one through six. Oh, I thought you meant eight and nine. Yeah. <laughs> you got one through six. Yeah. No, you got Sullivan you know, in there, too. Uh, who you can... know, Sullivan, Bonnecke, yeah. Williams. Cook, you got your best guys, you get yeah. your best hitters coming up, but you don't want to make it too difficult for them. Jason Gonzalez from Vanderbilt awaiting the 1-0. Takes mm. a breaking ball for a strike. Good looking pitch. Yep. Yeah, went in about 10 different directions. Sure right? did. <laughs> yeah, and Gonzalez obviously was sitting on the fastball and didn't get it. See if he doubles up on the breaking ball here on the one and one. There goes the runner for third. Throw to third. Will got him. Got him. In time. Yep. Austin Young guns down the base runner, the would be base stealer. What Chris a great Davis. play by Young. It was. Good throw. You know, he was on top of it. He saw him go, grabbed it. Didn't even come out of his crouch, I don't think. He just fired it. Well, he had to move out of the way of the batter. Right. The batter was still in no, the box, true. so he had to move to his left and fire. A throw that Christian Vasquez would have been proud of there by Austin Young. Gets the lead runner trying, the only runner trying that's to That's a steal. big out, too. Yeah, it is. That yeah, that's why. <laughs> there you go. That's why. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So we've seen enough runs scored on those uh, yep. over the course that, of the season. That throw out at third is magnified by that play right there. Three and one count on Gonzalez, meanwhile. The hitter's count. With two out and nobody on base. Foul tips that into the mitt. Not the ideal 3-1 pitch for a slugger. Three and two. The last time we were here, that ball might still be going. 24 hits, five errors in this game combined between the two teams. Ground ball on a high hop past mm. the dive of the shortstop. Bonnecke is a base hit for Gonzalez. Would have been a tough play regardless. Yeah, yeah. Great, great effort by Bonnecke, but he probably yeah. isn't making that throw. No, he's no. not making that, so that's. And again, magnifies the caught steal. There you go. Two outs instead of one. Here's Mitch Williams, who is 0 for 3 with a walk. The first baseman for Bristol. See, I look back. And I see that call third strike that Bristol took with the bases loaded and Nash were not able to capitalize. Yeah. So yeah. many moments to keep track of that in this is, game. Turning points just, all know, over the place. Turning points, but just right now I look at and I see 0-0-0 zero, zero, zero for Nashville. And that's, oh, that yeah. to me is big because once. Kyle Hag, Kyle Hag. Of the game. Yeah, yep. once they, yeah, that's it. Once they got up 8-2, things set quiet. Strike call to the outside corner. Yeah, yeah, a starting pitcher probably keeps his opponents to a batting average around 200 who got shelled. And then you have a relief pitcher who's got a batting average opponents so that everybody's going to the Hall of Fame. He comes in and shuts everybody down. Yeah. You never know. Curveball stays up and in. Yeah, Snyder's just got to focus here and get the out. I mean, you know, got the break with the stolen base, you know, with the caught stealing. and. He's just got to get out of this inning again. Let their bats do something. You know, give their bats a, a, you know, don't make it too tough on your bats. 
Two one pitch to Williams outside. Mm. Yeah, see, it's just ball, ball, ball. You know, because he, you know, he hasn't been zero two on anyone. He's been uh, three and one on a lot of batters. You don't want to put that runner on first in scoring position either. Not after you nail the guy who was in scoring position. And he, he did. Does yeah. Just a you know awkward pitch. Not you know. Two out walk issued by Snyder is going to be a pitcher catcher conference as a relief pitcher continues to warm for the Silver Knights. Ball gets loose from the bullpen all the way down to the home plate umpire. Shows off the arm. We have two outs, but a runner in scoring position for Bristol. Potential insurance runs aboard with ben, two outs. Ben Leading Maycock coming up now. Maycock. Ooh. Yeah, no kidding, huh? He is their home run threat. He has hit one in this game. Did that come with two outs? Yeah, it did. He had a two out homer in the. Yeah, he did, but nobody seemed to care at the time. It was up 6 1, and, you know, it's just. Whoop de doo, right? Yeah, right. Solo shot didn't, yep. hurt, you know, didn't hurt him. They got two more back. And then just that bases loaded, nobody out situation. It was just bad news. Bases loaded, ground ball to the right side, three runs Run scored. scored. Yeah. It's a good pitch right Strike there. Called. It is a good pitch, but again. He's, 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 you know, trying to get corners. Yeah. You know, because Justin Snyder doesn't have the velocity right now coming back from the shoulder injury that he had that, that, that cost, you know, that he cost him his college season mostly. Doesn't have that velocity to to, to get, get it right down the middle, you know, and, yeah. and get batters to swing and miss. Two balls and one strike. Probably also saw what Maycock did to the one that went down the middle. Yeah. yeah. I think it's still, I think it might have landed well, in Hudson. He also saw yeah. what happened. <laughs> he also saw what happened to one that went down the middle, and, you know, in this inning previously. It has Worcester out in front. The 2 1 pitch forthcoming to Ben Maycock. That's a strike. Ah, there you go. 81 Maycock on the gun. Looking back like he thought it was high, but umpire said that's. That's country hardball right in the uh, so now top of the zone. now you see why the numbers are the way they are. You know, he just. Yeah. That ball again looked like it moved in about 20 different directions before it, before it found, uh, the, you know, whatever strike zone is there. <laughs> it's 2-2. Two, two. You've got to think that he doesn't want to go 3-2 and potentially load the bases. So here comes the 2-2 two, two pitch from Justin Snyder. Maycock fouls And he got it him. Into the mix. Wow. Strike three. Holds on. Yep. That time it worked. Big strikeout. They go in the books against Maycock. We go to the bottom of the eighth. The Silver Knights have some work to do to salvage this game. One of a best of three series. A game they led at 1.8 to 2. They find themselves trailing for the first time tonight. 9 to 8 as Tom King's favorite song plays oh, at Holman <laughs> Stadium. They played this last night at Pittsfield too. They did? Yeah, all sorts wow. of yep. all sorts of people dancing on the field and everything else. It just <laughs> was like, stop the stop the music, let's play the game, let me get out of here. Get home. <laughs> Last Pike Pike is not your Oh, it's not, it's not, not your Pike digress yeah. just for a second. It's not your desired place on, yeah. a, on, a, on we, a Tuesday night at, at yeah. uh, eleven thirty. I'll try to take your mind off it. Did you go to the Vince Wilfork thing today? Were no, you at that? You weren't I, able to get there. No, no. No, I went to Nashville North and Nashville South football. Oh, yes. oh good. I, I look forward to reading about that. With Nash I, I South North I PG. have not been down at Camp yeah. John. I just... With our shortage right now, okay. I just don't have the time. Yeah. You know, it's well, just... people love reading about local high school football. We'll be doing the games on Nashua ETV coming up all too shortly. Uh, Bishop Girton, Nashua South and North, Jason Roby, one of our three men in the booth tonight with cameraman Tim O'Neill, longtime Nashua coach, told me that North is getting a little extra help yeah, that's on the right. coaching staff that's this right. season. Yeah, Kendall Reyes. Um, Taking some time. Uh, Did he play for South? Played for, play for North. He played, he played for, for North. North. Okay, yeah. Played for this guy. Played for he me. Played for yeah. Him. yeah. That's right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. He wasn't. Uh, he wasn't 300 pounds when he played for me. He was. Uh, but he was. You know, six four, two twenty five. Could run. Could jump. 
long arms just, you, so you know. You knew. I mean, you just knew. You saw it. You knew. Uh, you his saw best it, years you were, were project, ahead of him. Yeah, you saw yeah. it. You projected the athlete that he had. Yeah. The right. that he had. If he could get bigger and stronger, he was going to be He didn't turn himself. 17 until he graduated. So he was a young yeah. wow. high school student. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah. UConn, of course, you, you know, the, talking to him the other day, he mentioned, you know, UConn and UNH were the two final schools he was really looking at. And um, the reason he chose UConn was because of, it's 1A as opposed to 1AA or football subdivision and all that stuff. But they had a, the facility that they have on the campus of UConn. The indoor facility is is outstanding. It's called the Burton Football Complex. And we went down to see him practice and in that comp, in that facility, and it's just an unbelievable facility. Um, a lot of people say it's second in the country only to what they Oregon? have out in Oregon. That's yeah, right. With yeah, with Nike. The Burton Family wow, Football Conference. It's called something. in UConn. If you ever happen to be out there in Bristol, it's uh, it's unbelievable. Oh, Bristol's like a sports capital, huh? Yeah. What with ESPN and a store. Excuse center? me, I said Bristol stores. Oh, my, oh stores. My okay, yeah, stores yeah, Connecticut. Stores. Like, Bristol's uh, where I'm going tomorrow. There right. you go. But oh, yeah, right. Bristol's here. Uh, stores, stores Connecticut. But what right. a facility! This what is a it. facility! Well, I can see why you have Bristol on the mind. The Bristol there you go. Blues lead this game nine eight, bottom of the eighth. How's our innings doing on the screen, Tim? Oh, it's right. It's fixed. Okay. The Ashley TV bringing you this game live. If you're watching on Wednesday, August 9, welcome everybody. Thank you for being with us. And we have had a great game to this point. Could be about to get even greater. Silver Knights trail by a run. Game one of a best of three. We have a new relief pitcher into the game for Bristol. Mm. And it is a guy that is wearing what is normally not a pitcher's number. Number nine, right-hander, two balls and one strike to the leadoff. That's in the Grab hole, maybe? No, nope. no. Uh, gobbled no. up. Covered. Tom uh, Tomasa makes the play. One up, one down here in the Silver Knights. Tom, you would know. Did Ken Reyes do a... Uh, uh, a guest appearance here this summer. Did he do a first pitch no, throw? Was a couple no. of years ago, maybe? It was two years ago. Okay. Yeah. Two That's years ago. The year before it got rained out, and he was okay. able to do it last year. There you go. Cam Cook, the batter now for the Silver Knights, batting with one out, nobody on. He did first do pitch his voice swinging. club thing, though. Three yes. hopper. Oh. That one was a bad oh. hop. Wow. I think that wow. should go as a base hit. That yep. was really yeah, that was tough. Single. Tough, tough, tough. And you know where that is? That's where a lot of cleats. Have been in the dirt tonight. I don't think they had an opportunity to drag the infield. Right. You see Doesn't the major like leaguers right. drag the infield. That's that right. hit a cleat or a spike mark, and it came up wickedly. Yeah, that was a tough hop. On Jason Gonzalez, and it will go as a base hit for Cam Cook, who hit it hard, and he's on with one out. Potential tying run for the Silver Knights. Kyle Bonnicky is up now. He's had a terrific night, single, double, triple. And takes a ball outside. 83 miles an hour. Decent lead over there at first for Step Cook. Outside. Left fielder shaded a little bit. Tom, you have a blues roster? Uh, not on me. Okay. Hit hard right for a base hit. Bonnicky comes through. They gonna test him? No. They are no. not. No, you're down down good right move. <laughs> you're down a run. No reason to do that right now. He, he gets thrown out. It's game. I don't know if that's Maycock still out there. Right though. Uh, looks like 17. 17. He, he doesn't look like he's as stockily built as Maycock. I could be wrong, but he might have had a defensive change out there. Well, thank you. There you go. So um, Nick Roy is the right fielder. Hmm. Who knows? Maybe Nick Roy wouldn't have thrown out the guy at third. Uh, I just don't think Cook had enough. But you know, if he's a defensive replacement, I'm sure he's got the, the tools. He didn't have enough in the tank. Hard to set Come a on, baby. Chance well, to tie here we the go. Game. Here, here comes we go. Cook. Around third. The throw to the plate is not in time. It's 9 9. Throw to second. Kick the Here comes the go ahead. Here comes the go ahead run. 10 9. The Silver Knights take the 
lead on one wild, wild play. Wow, unbelievable. Unbelievable. But, like I said, so important that they kept them off the board to one run right. last inning with these guys up because they'll get you hits. Just the way it was scripted. Forcing them to throw the ball around. Anthony Maduri with the big hit. Base hit, let's First see. First pitch swinging. Base hit E2. Yep. Yeah. Cook and Bonnicky both score ahead of the single by Maduri, and that puts Ryan Sullivan up there with one out and another and runner in scoring you need position. as many as you can. And Very they high to left. It's and down the foul. line. Slicing. Foul. In nope. foul territory. Didn't have enough distance anyway. No, he just got it off the end. That would have been a difficult call for the ups if that's going to come down right over the pole and from a high distance. Sullivan's got that kind of major league power. We saw so many disputes over the years with the AAA level pride in here when that 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 pole is just not high enough. To, right. You know. And. Uh, hmm. Yeah, Butch climbed it, remember? Right? Yeah. I wasn't here that night. I missed all the good nights. 0-1. Yeah, watch count. out. Strike two Ooh, at the knees. At the knees is right. 0-2 on Sullivan. No fear for uh, the Bristol Blues relief pitcher there going right after Sullivan. Do I not have a number nine on here? I don't think so. I'll have to check with the... Uh, the team. The pitch. Very high to center. This would have easily have played at a runner from third base. He's gonna go. I think he, is. he is. He's going to tag and go. There's a great throw to third. And oh, he, he overslid the base. again. That's what the a second time tonight. Spectacular throw by Chris Davis. Look at that. Wow, Chris Davis Look just unleashed that. the throw. Look at that, never throws it down. Oh. Wow, he gets Midori at third base. That's, and you know, watching him slide, it looked like he slid late. And that's the reason why he you overslide. Over, yeah. yeah, and he had to, and he, you know, looking at the position of the third baseman, he was on the home plate side of the bag. Yeah. So he took it wide. I See, you. PJ knows, every run in this game yeah. is critical. Yeah. A one-run lead against this Bristol team, the way Nash has been pitching. In this game? Yes. No. Not, not, yeah. not, not quite there. Yeah. Wow. What a spectacular so here we, throw So here we go. The Just the way they drew it up. Yeah. <clears throat> and you know, you got to figure that it went through the mind, Jason, of uh, the outfielder, Chris Davis, when he threw that. He probably actually hoped for the overslide. He's right. like, I'm going to get the ball there so good that the guy's going to want to slide late. Through it, and, right. You know, through it, and, and then ha it's happened again. Boy, we've seen just about everything you can see and witness at a, at a baseball game yeah. here tonight. And it's, uh, I know it's, you know, for the hometown crowd, not what you want to see, but but this is exciting. This is 10-9. This is great. Yep. Reliever's name is Joel Torres. Torres. Joel it's Torres. on the website, but not on the ro printed roster. Oh, not okay. on the roster. Okay. Yeah. Joel Torres gives up the tie and go ahead runs on a wild play. I think we can recreate it. Midori hit a single with men on first and but second. I'll tell you something. And the lead runner, Cook, scored. And then what happened? It was uh, a play of the plate. No, it was a, a throw to the catcher. He threw to second, and somehow. The second baseman I, booted it or something. I think Midori kicked the ball into the left field. It? Or okay. he needed it. You know, it wasn't intentional. Okay. And then Bonnicky scored from third base. Right. On right. That. Yeah. It was going to be second and third. Instead, it was. Bonnicky need the ball into left field, and that gave us the go-ahead run. The emotions of this game. You saw it when B.J. Never took his helmet and slammed, and slammed it down. Slammed a couple times tonight. Because he like, just yeah. saw it as a replay of another run yeah. by the board. He knows, you know. Yeah. So let's see. I don't see who we had. We have an announcement yet? It looks like Murphy. Yeah, it's Murphy. It is Murphy? Yeah. So here we go. And Murphy put... Allowed the tying run to come to the plate on uh, last night, but got a double play to end the game. That's right. Yep. Murphy gets closer duty. Oh, if they had tied that game, I would have been. For the Silver Knights. 
He's thrown 91 miles an hour. Closer began the yep. year as a closer, moved to start for a little bit, and then they put him back in the bullpen. What do you got for an ERA there, Jason? He's got a 5-2-7. ERA is 5-2-7, oh. 2-2 two two win-loss. He, he got into trouble when he became a starter. I see. His, yeah. his, relief, his relief numbers haven't been that bad. He's got nine saves. Yep. Nine, nine saves. saves. And he's there got, he, and he's, he's got, got a strikeout. Out. He's trying to get the tenth and biggest save of the season here in the playoffs. 91 on the gun Oof. from Murphy. And, and he smoke. strikes out the leadoff batter, Alex Loparco. And we go to the 8-9 hitters now. Oh, boy. Jeff Shanfeld and Mark Tumosa, who have reached base five times between them and scored three runs. Shanfeld to bat now. What did he do his last time up? Do you have Shanfeld's at bat? Yeah, Shanfeld walked. Did he I walk? Believe, okay, yeah. yeah. He's walked twice tonight. Big swing and a miss. 90 on the gun. Murphy throwing gas, trying to seal the deal here in game one. Look at the, the bullpen. Knights. Look at the bullpen. All up. Yeah, they're just All watching, up. standing, watching. Run the gamut of emotions in this one. The 0 1. Strike two. Strike two. Again, the fastball. This one on the inside corner throws to Mosa. Uh, Chantfeld, excuse me, the catcher for Bristol. Down to. An 0 and 2 count now on the eight hitter. One out, nobody aboard. Silver Knights leading by one run. 10 9. Foul back. <laughs> what a mighty cut Chantfeld had at that fastball. Casey at the bat. Yeah, and not wasting one was Murphy. That would have been a call strike had Chantfeld not got a piece of it. Approaching the three-hour mark for this game. And it's been action-packed minute after Got minute. Him. Low. No. Nope. Oh, they thought so. I think it was uh, actually, I think Young blocked that one. It was a uh, bouncer. One and two, the count. I was looking at Young moving forward. Yeah. I thought that, it, yeah. that he was thought his he was body line. Yeah, it, I thought maybe. his body line was just yeah. framing it. Just blocking it. The one, two. Foul straight back. And whoa, oh, that was a cut and a half by... Shanfell, you tell what, if he hits that ball out in front with that kind of swing, we're going to be tied up. But gonna that's be here a little said longer. Than done. Yeah. <laughs> Tom oh, King with the what evil look. look, the evil stare. <laughs> yeah. Some of us have seen enough baseball. Hit hard ah, to left center. It's going to hang stay up long there. Enough. It does. Two outs. Caught on a line by Tyree. Shanfeld hit it too well. Down to their last out, the Bristol Blues send their nine hitter up there. Mark Tomosa, who is three for four <laughs> with two runs scored and a run batted in. But he's got to face Murphy, who's getting it up there in the 90s here in the closer roll. The pitch inside, mm. ball one. Adrenaline right there, a little bit yeah. too much. Now, if you are Tomosa, you are thinking, this guy's got no fear of me. He's throwing 91. This could be my best shot to at least hit a single here. Uh, he misses outside. outside yeah. Patient was Tomosa. Again, Two against this no team, strike. you don't want to open the door. No. They'll Green stick, on deck, homered his last time they up. They will stick their foot in it and barge it open. He is going to be taken all the way here, you would imagine. No! Nope. <laughs> what a no, cut! This team will cut. That's why yeah. these guys in the bottom half of the order have done so much damage. They're swinging their pitch. They are, man. That was a pitch. That was a hitter's pitch. It was. But he just fouled it back. Just a little late. Yeah. That's why he's number nine. Or he might have been just underneath yeah. it. Last night, the two number nine hitters in the game each hit their first home run of the season. Pittsfields and. Uh, wow. The Pittsfield's Connor Moriarty and Chris Blandini. Murphy's pitch, line drive, base, base hit. hit to right, and that will get Logan Green to the Fought plate. Off. Yeah. Green, who homered his last time up, also has singled and been hit by I'm a pitch tonight. I'm telling you, this team does not go down easy. That's a good aggressive at bat right Wasn't there. Wasn't it? Yeah, really was. Yeah. Well, you know. No fear. Yeah, but you know what? Murphy let that at bat happen because he 2-0. Oh. 
You know, I yeah. mean, you know, he, is it what Murphy's was he, law right now? What, Tom? Was, he, what <laughs> was he doing the first two hitters? Strike one, strike two, strike one, strike two. But he two. didn't wait. He didn't wait at two and zero. Oh. He went after no, the third right. pitch. Yeah, he, he went after. He was aggressive. But Murphy has got to get strike one. Okay, on these guys. so Green is sitting now on one and zero. Oh. And Green's going to be running. And he is the guy that got out in front of a fastball last well, time. You're going to. I mean, not Green, but you, not Green, but Tomosa may be running. Oh, you he, think he so? May, yes, I do. With the arm behind the plate. Ground ball, two high hops. The flip to second, and the Silver Knights wow. escape. What a they game. They win game one, 10 to 9. Crowd goes nuts. Yep. Rightfully so. Tale Whoa. of three games here tonight. Yep. Yes. I know it. What a fantastic contest we have witnessed here tonight. Well, we've seen a lot of good ones with this franchise over seven oh, years, have. haven't we? Yeah. yeah. They almost never let you down as far as playoff excitement. No, they don't. They don't. And a good crowd here, 1357. Wow. So For one night's notice? For one night's notice. One night's notice on a that's Wednesday. Good. That field had three nights notice. They put in 27. Okay. Wow. This place, if they had a week's notice, they put in two. That two is grand. great. Tom, potential uh, another home game if they got through this series? If they win be, this series, they would probably open up at what, home again. Do you know what finals. day of the week it might be? Uh, well, you would you would think that, let's see. Maybe the uh, lower Saturday. seed? Saturday. Saturday? I was thinking that too. Thank you. Tom King. Yeah, you know what I'm thinking? Yeah? I'm thinking I'm going to Bristol maybe for back-to-back. <laughs> oh, -back you may wow. be. Wow. Yeah. On the new car. Connecticut bound. New car? Really? I got to see we, these we wheels. Wow. Huh? What Look are we rolling in? We're rolling in a uh, silver 2014 Corolla. Very nice. <laughs> oh, you're moving it, up. It just got years. over. It, it, it yeah. has about uh, 260,000 less Perfect. than the one I oh, traded okay. in. Wow. So maybe maybe an overnight stay at a local Holiday Inn if it's a back-to-back -back night there. Uh, on the on the Nashville Telegraph Tower. Nah, nah, no, that's not good. Yeah, that's, <laughs> you just got me fired, Jason. Yeah, that's not happening. Thank you to all our Nashua Nashua ETV viewers who stuck with us through this game. It was a fantastic 10 to 9 contest. You couldn't have scripted it any better, Jason Roby. Unbelievable! It, it's it, it's exciting. It's uh, man, it makes you be a if you weren't a baseball fan before and you came tonight to see this, you're rip-roaring and ready to go and hoping this season keeps extending and let's hope these guys get back here for another round. Amen. For Jason Roby and Tom King and our cameraman Tim O'Neill, I'm John Collins thanking you for watching the final score, game one of a best of three series in the semifinal of the 2017 FCBL playoffs, won by the home team, the Nashua Silver Knights, 10 to nine. Good night from Holman Stadium, everybody.